Hi, everyone, and a very pleasant welcome to Miami for the playing of the 31st Orange Bowl game. This is Jim Gibbons, along with Billy Vessels, and it'll be our pleasure to share with you the thrilling play-by-play -play of what promises to be a tremendous football game between two great teams, Alabama and Texas. The Crimson Tide of Paul Bear Bryant, the number one college team in the land. Against Coach Darrell Royals, Texas Longhorns, the team that was number one last year and number four this season. The weather, a balmy 70 degrees, partly cloudy, slight possibility of showers. The wind will play a small factor in the game. It's about 12 miles per hour. The crowd, an absolute sellout, 72,000. Not a ticket available anywhere throughout Miami. A very colorful sight here, the first of the Orange Bowl games at night, the first bowl game played at night, actually. The field green down below us with the white lettering and the numerals, the Orange Bowl in big white letters on the end, either end of the field, ringed with the bands, nine of them. A very colorful setting. The crowd, 72,000, some of them in their shirt sleeves in the 70-degree weather, some with sweaters, some with jackets, and a few with raincoats because there is a possibility of a few showers. But indeed, it is a beautiful and colorful setting. And it'll be my pleasure, as I mentioned, to share this microphone with Billy Vessels, the All-American from Oklahoma. Billy, I know it's a thrill for you living here in Miami to see this site, the first of the bowl games ever to be played at night. I know you have observations about the team, their coaches. I know you want to tell our fans about them. Jim, I wish the fans could be here to see this beautiful site in front of us now, uh, the Orange Bowl committee has done a great thing in shifting this game tonight. Uh, we have uh, a great reception here. It's the greatest demand on the tickets in the history of the Orange Bowl. And what a beautiful sight it is. Uh, the band's forming here on the end zone, ready to bring out uh, the theme tonight for pageantry, which will be the recreation of the composing of the national anthem. Uh, and it, I think the real theme of this game is going to be the standings at the end of the season. Alabama, number one. Uh, Texas, number four. Texas, of course, losing that one ball game, 13 to 12. Uh, as the fans probably know, they went for the two-point try and tried to win uh, over Arkansas, which was victorious today in the Sugar Bowl, I might say. And they think that they should still be number one in the nation. I think you can hear the background as the Orange Bowl game gets underway. This is a beautiful pageantry with nine bands formed here. The University of Alabama band, the Longhorn band from Texas. But the thing of it is, Jim, I think the... The real theme of this game is Texas thinks they should be number one. Alabama was voted number one. All right, Billy, the band's coming on the field right now. Just a pyramid of colors, beautiful indeed, almost every color you can think of. Alabama's million-dollar band, Texas's very fine band, high school bands that are prominent throughout Miami. As they parade now to the 50-yard line, it might be well to take a look at the respective records of these two teams. They are indeed impressive. And when Paul Bear Bryan and Darrell Royal come on the field, you will be hearing about and seeing two of the most winning coaches in college football today. Their records indeed are enviable. For Paul Bryant, in his 20th season as head coach, his seventh at Alabama, his overall record, 151-1, 49 loss, 13 ties. At Alabama, when he left to go back to his alma mater, where he starred in the early 30s, 1931, as the end opposite of Hudson, 60, or Lee Howell, I should say, not Hudson, he has a record of 61, 10 lost, and 5 ties his second undefeated and second national championship. So you can bet your life in Alabama, they're very proud of Paul Bear Bryant. And the record of Darrell Royal, just as impressive in Texas. His 10th year as head coach, his overall record 76, won, 27 lost, three ties at Texas, his eighth year. 68 won, 15 lost, and three ties. Two unbeaten seasons, national champions in 1963. And we'll have the starting lineups for you in just a moment. This is James Daly, your regular Sunday afternoon monitor host. This Sunday, we'll be getting some personal insight into a performer who is as unconventional as he is talented. Anthony Quinn, a former preacher turned actor by accident who has made more than 100 films and who now plans to build a center for philosophers on the island of Rhodes. Mr. Quinn has this to say of himself. 
I certainly am an iconoclast in the sense that I don't like uh, prefabricated uh, philosophy. I don't like predigested values. Uh, I'm a man that's trying to find my own values as I go along. And I must say that uh, uh, as opposing to an anarchistic uh, way of life, it isn't that I want to destroy. It's actually that I would like people to find their own values always with the end result hoping to be for the good. Join us this Sunday and hear the rest of this conversation with Anthony Quinn on NBC's Monitor. Here at the Orange Bowl, it might be well to review the 1964 records of these two great teams. Alabama with a record of 10-1. No losses. They started out with a 31-3 victory over Georgia. And then they came along to win over Tulane by a score of 36-6. They beat Vanderbilt 24 to nothing. In the North Carolina State game, which they won 21 to nothing, their great quarterback, Joe Namath, was injured. The first of three injuries that he sustained throughout the season. They won over Tennessee by a score of 19 to 8. Beat Florida by a score of 17 to 14. Won over Michigan State, or Mississippi State, correction, 23 to 6. Beat LSU 17 to 9. Won over Georgia Tech 24 to 7. And Namath, who had been injured in the Florida game, came off of the bench and in scoring position threw two quick touchdown passes. He is regarded by Alabamians as the greatest passer ever to come out of Alabama. They won over Auburn by a score of 21 to 14. And Namath's record indeed is glowing because he has a record of 64 completions out of 100 passes that he's thrown this year for 756 yards. And it doesn't take long to figure out that that's a percentage record of 64 which is absolutely fabulous, the Southeastern Conference record. However, when he's been out of the ball game, a young man by the name of Steve Sloan, who is six feet tall, 183-pound junior, also does very well. As a matter of fact, in only about three games, was Namath a contributing factor. But when he was in there, he was dynamite. However, Sloan has done a tremendous job, too. He has completed 45 of 72 passes for 574 yards, and his percentage of completions is 62, and that isn't bad either. So Alabama, with a fine team, their quarterback, and certainly more passes than Paul Bear Bryant normally staff throws. And now let's take a look here at the respective lineups, and we're going to introduce for you the offensive lineup of Texas and the defensive lineup of Alabama. So let's take a look, first of all, at the Alabama defensive lineup. At the left end, number 82, Charles Stevens, 6'2", 189-pound senior from Thomasville, Alabama. At the left tackle, number 64, Jim Simmons, 6 feet tall, 201 pounds, a senior from Piedmont, Alabama. At the left guard, number 71, Wayne Freeman, 6 feet tall, 192-pound senior from Fort Payne, Alabama. At center, the linebacker, number 54, Paul Crane. 6'2", 188-pound junior from Pritchard, Alabama. The linebacker, number 56, Tim Bates. 6'1", 188-pound junior from Tarrant City, Alabama. At the right guard, number 70, Cecil Doughty. He's 6 feet tall. He weighs 202 pounds. He's a sophomore from Cherokee, Alabama. At the right tackle, number 76, Dan Curley. He's a big fella. 6'1", 226 pounds, a senior from Talladega, Alabama. At the right end, number 81, Creed Gilmer, six feet tall, 178 pounds, a junior from Birmingham, Alabama. At the halfback, number 44, Mickey Andrews, six feet tall, 186 pounds, senior from Ozark, Alabama. At safety, number 24, John Mosley, who's five feet 10, 180 pounds, sophomore from Thomaston, Alabama. And the kicker, who is a very good one, incidentally, for the Crimson Tide, is David Ray. David is six feet tall, 184 pound junior, and he has something like 12 of 17 field goals to his credit this year. He's kicked 23 of 25 points after touchdown. So if uh, Paul Bear Bryant's team gets in close, Mr. David Ray is likely to come in to try a field goal, or he may very well be in the ball game because he's caught two passes for touchdowns. We've introduced to you the defensive lineup of Alabama. We haven't uh, ascertained as yet whether Alabama will receive and go with the offense because we haven't had the toss of the coin. But the teams are being introduced in that fashion, and that's the fashion we wanted to give them to you. Offensively now for Texas, at left end, number 80, Dan Malden. 
Number 50 is the left tackle, who is Gene Bledsoe, 6'3", 215 pounds, a sophomore. Number 32, coming in now, being introduced down on the field, is Timmy Dore, who's the co-captain of the Texas Longhorns. And now on the field, let's join Bud Wilkinson. I'm going to keep it the majority of the game. Well, I don't know, Coach. This is based so much on fumbles and pass interceptions, things that kind. I know that it's, we, if we don't, we're in trouble. Lots of luck, Darrell. Thank you much, Coach. Darrell Royal, the head coach of Texas, as you, of course, know, with Bud Wilkinson, the former head coach of Oklahoma, and the crowd of Texan stands as the Texas band down below us picks up the tempo to the eyes of Texas. But getting on with the remainder of that Texas team, we mentioned to you at left tackle offensively will be Gene Bledsoe, number 50, 6'3", 215 pounds, a sophomore. At left guard, number 64, Frank Bedrick, 5'10", 201, 10 pounds, a junior. At center, number 69, Olin Underwood, 6'3", 210 pounds, a senior. Olin will alternate offensively and defensively with Jack Howe. Jack will wear jersey number 55. He's 6'2", 210 pounds, a junior from Houston. Tommy Novitz, their great right guard and linebacker. Number 60, 6'2", 215 pounds, a junior from San Antonio. At right tackle will be John Elliott. John wears jersey number 70. He's 6'3", 217 pounds, a sophomore. He's from Warren, Texas. And at the right end, Pete Lemon, 6'1", 211 pounds, a junior from Jacksonville, Texas. It might be well to point out that only one member of the entire Texas team only one member is not from the state of Texas. He's from Oklahoma. You'll hear a tremendous cheer going up here in just a moment, I'm sure, as Joe Namath is introduced to the crowd. That was Sloan, Steve Sloan, who was introduced to the crowd. And here is Joe Namath. Listen. Let's go down to the field and Paul Bryan and Bud Wilkinson. Uh, do you think that uh, quarterback Namath will be able to play? I doubt it very seriously, Bud. We may put him back in uh, spread formation for a time or two, but I doubt it. I know it's a tough go, but lots of luck, Paul. You, we'll be set for the kickoff in just a minute. This is Chet Huntley. The year 1964 produced many old and familiar sounds and many new ones. This is one of them. Both old and new. Those are the voices of Vietnamese villagers whose lives have been shattered by war. You will hear their voices and all the voices and sounds that made up the audio history of 1964 on Monitor this Sunday night when David Brinkley and I review the year. Listen to a pre-release broadcast of A Time to Keep 1964, a year-end record album over most of these NBC stations Sunday at 7.05 Eastern Time. Jim Gibbons and Billy Vessels here at the Orange Bowl. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. You are tuned to A10 on your dial, WGY Schenectady, the smoothest sound around. In just a matter of moments, we'll have the tossing of the coin. The entire group of seniors will come out for Alabama and the co-captains for Texas, Tim Doerr and Jay Hudson. Number 22 is Hudson. Number 32 is Tim Doerr. And this, the Alabama Crimson Tide coming out to meet with Red Gavette down on the field. We'll have the tossing of the coin in just a moment. And we'll get down now to pick up. Captains, for the benefit of the other officials, Mr. Sharp there is your head lineman. Mr. Cole will be your back judge. Mr. Burke will be your field judge. Mr. Cook will be your clock operator. Mr. Stewart will be your umpire. For the benefit of the audience, the people in the back of Alabama are their seniors. 
If there's a penalty, and obviously it's your choice, I'll step it off without giving you an option. I've always give you the man's number who's committed the foul. You're the visiting captain. You call this corner in the air. If should I miss it, we'll flip it again. You call head captain. Hail the if, captain. You win the toss. Who defend? Defend this goal down here. We'll kick this way. Alabama will defend this goal. We just didn't look through yet. Huh? Now, captain, you may receive from this goal, or you may get the ball. You're receiving them. Alabama, we're kicking that goal. Luck to both of you. Let's have a good ball game. Thank you very much, sir. Well, as you heard, Alabama has won the toss. And in just a matter of moments, this great Orange Bowl of 65 will be underway. Billy Vessels, you uh, had an opportunity, I think, to take a look at the respective bowl records of Alabama and Texas uh, as they prepare to kick off and receive. Suppose you tell us about them. Well, Jim, as people know, Alabama is known as the bowl football team. They've been in 17 bowl games. They've <clears throat> they won 10, lost 5, and tied 2. Texas, record in bowl games, 7, 5, and 2 out of 14 appearances. Texas and Alabama last played in 1948 in the Sugar Bowl, there Texas winning. Texas last appearance in the Orange Bowl, I might say, was when they beat Georgia 48 to 24. A great game, and I'd like to say real brief before the kickoff, Jim, for those who like to compare, Texas beat uh, Tulane 31 to nothing, Alabama beat Tulane 36 to six. So you can see it's gonna be an even game all the way. Can't make it much closer than that, Billy, and Ray. David Ray is all set to kick off. Deep for the Texas Longhorn. Green on the far side. And Harris on the near side. And there's the kick. Waiting for it is Green in the 5. He's to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, the 25. Fights his way across the 30-yard line. On the 31. So it'll be first and 10 off of the Longhorns on their own 31-yard line. As the Orange Bowl of 1965 gets off to a roaring start from 72,000 fans. In case you joined us a little bit late, the weather, 70 degrees. Cloudy, but very delightful. Kristenick is at quarterback. Harrison Coy the has. Phillips at full for Texas and driving into the center of the line. And going for maybe a yard or two is the fullback, Carol Phillips, 6'2", 200-pound senior. Coming in to make the tackle, 54, Crane at 56 Bates. Again from the 31 to the 33. The ball just about 22 yards from the north side of the field. Out of the huddle come the Texas Longhorns. They employ the T formation with a wing right, strong to the right side now. Driving with the ball is Kristenick, the quarterback, and he goes across the 35, up to about the 36-yard line, a gain of about three yards before Crane came in to make the stop. Jim, Alabama will be running what they call a monster defense. It's actually a 5-3 setup with the three linebackers, but the one linebacker going to the strong side each time. Wing right once again with Harris right behind Lamons the end. Kristenick calling the signals. No score in this ball game. It's a fullback. Phillips driving to the 40-yard line. Right over his own left guard. He powers his way up to the 40-yard line. So it'll be third down and our fourth down rather and just a yard shy of a first down. Coming in to make the tackle once again with Jim Simmons and Paul Crane. Crane the linebacker. Simmons the left tackle. Fourth down, a yard to go. Punting situation as Ernie Coy, 6'2", 220-pound senior, drops back to the 25-yard line. Going deep for Alabama, standing on the 20-yard line. Harris on the far side. Here's the kick, getting it away. A beautiful high kick. Harris waiting for it on the 12-yard line. Dances around and is brought down on the 13 in a driving tackle on the part of Texas. Frank Bedrick, number 64, came driving in to drop him on about the 13-yard line as Harris took that ball in the 11. He danced around to try to find running room, and down he went. No score in this ball game with 12 minutes, 44 seconds remaining here in the first quarter at the Orange Bowl. So Alabama, the Crimson Tide, will have the ball just about 20 yards in from the north side on the 13-yard line in the huddle. Sloan is at quarterback, Bowman at the left half, Wall is at full. Ogden is at the flanker back spot. A pitch out to the right. The ball carrier gets across the 15. It was Harris, and he got up almost to about the 16-yard uh, line before he stepped out of bounds. As Alabama now sends in their offensive team, they had the receiving team in at the moment when the kick took place. 
He went out of bounds, stopped the clock with 12 minutes, 19 seconds shown here remaining in the first quarter. No score in the ball game, and the Crimson tied with a second down, seven situation. Alabama in the crimson and white jerseys under direction of Paul Bryant. And again, the crimson tide comes out of the huddle in the I formation for the moment, now shifting into the T in motion. Is Ogden with the ball is Sloan. Sloan passes out, and the pass is no good. Intended for Bowman. Bowman had his hands on it. The short pass had dropped it. But Billy Vessels, he could have gone for some yards. Oh, he could have had a real fine game there. Actually, Darrell Rolls. Texas team will probably be giving him most of the flat passes. On some occasions, uh, they'll try to move a man out there, but basically, Darrell's just going to go with his defense he's had all year, the 6-2, and the three-man deep. All right, Billy, on third down, seven yards to go. Alabama's ball on the 16-yard line. Buddy French, their punter, has come in, and it looks like the Crimson Tide is going to punt as number 21, Dixon, for the Texas Longhorns. There's a pass from center. Here's the kick. A beautiful high kick by Buddy French. Waiting for the ball is Dixon. He fumbles and picks it up on the 20. On his feet, back at the 25, and down he goes on the 25-yard line and a driving tackle by Alabama coming in as Buddy French really got his foot into that ball. We've had two absolutely beautiful kicks here tonight, and I think it more or less personifies the coaching techniques of both Darrell Rawl and Bear Bryant when they love to have the strong game, the strong kicking game. There is a timeout in the field with the score, Alabama nothing, Texas nothing. This is Frank Blair. Be sure to hear radio's most informative and interesting new feature series, Emphasis. I appear daily on Emphasis with my new program, Emphasis Let's Be Frank, in which I speak frankly about a variety of things that make up the bits and pieces of everyday life. Also on Emphasis, there is NBC's celebrated newsman, Frank McGee, who presents inside stories behind the news. Emphasis is Chet Huntley, who reaches into his years of experience as a newsman as he reports on Emphasis Plain Talk. There's Arlene Francis on Emphasis, telling you how to enjoy a more beautiful life. And following Arlene Francis on Emphasis is star NBC newswoman Nancy Dickerson, who brings you all the news from Washington. Emphasis is also sports with Lindsay Nelson, with his colorful commentary and interviews with top athletes from the exciting world of sports. Hear the biggest names in broadcasting eight times daily, Monday through Friday on Emphasis, on this NBC station. Jim Gibbons along with Billy Vessels here at the Orange Bowl. 11 minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score as Lamons comes wide to the right. Kristen is calling the signals for the Texas Longhorns on their own 25-yard line. With the ball and driving over his own left tackle is Ernie Coy. Coy going right over his left tackle and left guard. Goes from the 25 up to the 28-yard line. A gain of three yards in the play before Crane and Bates, the linebackers, came in to make the stop. It'll be second down and seven yards to go. Second and seven for the Longhorns of Darrell Royal. It's wing right this time out of the wing T formation. Harris set right behind the right end, Lamons. Strong side to the right. With the ball once again is Coy. Coy breaks over his own right tackle across the 30 up to the 34-yard line before he's brought down. Coming in this time to make the tackle from the secondary, Andrews, as Ernie Coy went to the 34-yard line. It'll be third down and a yard to go. No score in the ball game. Ten minutes, 49 seconds, and the crowd hums as Texas looks like they might be set to put on a small-sized drive. Kristenek driving, gets the first down across the middle as he goes across the 35, up to about the 36 to 37-yard line. Jack Howe, the center doing a fine job of blocking for him as he went up to the 38-yard line. The first first down of the ball game. Simmons, Jim Simmons, the big left tackle, a senior from Piedmont, Alabama, came in to make the stop. Out of the huddle come the Longhorns. No score in the ball game. Ten minutes, 19 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's wing left this time, strong side to the left. With the ball is Coy. Coy going wide to his left, turns the corner at the 40, goes to the 42. Across the field before he is tripped up and brought down in the 42-yard line by Gilmer, Creed Gilmer, who plays defensive right end, and Paul Crane. Ball on the 42 on the inbound hash mark from the far side of the field. Once again, just to give you the directions, we are on the south side looking to the north. Texas moving to the east with the ball. This time again is Coy sweeping the ends as he comes across the 45 and fights his way up to the 50-yard line and a beautiful power drive on the part of Ernie Coy. Six feet two, 220 pounds. Got a good block that time from Harold Phillips. And Billy Vessels 
the Texas Longhorns are at the moment sweeping the ends of Alabama. Oh, with, with very devastating power, this Ernie Coy is, is one of the finest runners in the country, a combination tailback and fullback. Out of the huddle come the Longhorns. Nine minutes remaining in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. Texas and Alabama. With the ball is Coy, and down he goes on a beautiful tackle, almost at the line of scrimmage. Gilmer, the right end, came diving in that time as Kristenick handed off to Coy. Coy just got that ball, and Mr. Gilmer said, hello, that's the end of the road, just over the 50-yard line. Just nudged the ball into Bama territory. Eight minutes, 51 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. Texas now has put on the longest drive of the game from the 25 up to the 50. Coy once again sweeps to the left, goes outside the end, gets up to the 45-yard line before he's brought down. Ernie Coy taking the pitch back from Marv Kristenick, the quarterback, was finally pulled down by Lewis Thompson after he picked up some five yards. So it'll be third down and about five yards to go. Jim Simmons also in on the tackle. The Longhorns have Sauer, Bledsoe, Goad, Howe, Hensley, Elliott, and Lamons along the forward wall. They've got Kristenick, Harris, Phillips, and Coy. The pitch back is to Coy. Coy looking to pass, but keeps the ball and gets across the 45, down to about the 43-yard line. Ernie Coy, as he circled to the right after taking the pitch back from Kristenick, had that right arm of his raised high on the air. He wanted to pass, couldn't find anybody open, and was brought down on the 43. It'll be fourth down. Billy Vessels in about three yards to go. Ernie had a man open momentarily. Uh, Phil Harris, his very fine wing back, uh, who did so well last year in the... Uh, Sugar uh, Cotton Bowl game. Right, Billy. We'll be back to that in just a moment. There's time out in the field with the score Alabama nothing, Texas nothing. This is Russ Ward of NBC News. It began 10 months ago with the New Hampshire primary. NBC News was there and stayed with the political story through the Republican convention in San Francisco, then the Democratic convention in Atlantic City, the tumultuous months of campaigning and the election. And once again, as in every major news event in recent history, more people by far followed the convention and election coverage on NBC than any other network. Now Inauguration Day is almost at hand, January 20th, and NBC radio and television are ready to bring you the most complete and comprehensive coverage of this memorable day and night. Chet Huntley and David Brinkley will be anchormen on television with Robert McCormick and me on radio, backed by the entire NBC News team. From the Capitol, from the White House, and later at the gala inaugural ball, scores of NBC newsmen will cover the solemn events of this inauguration day. Be with us Wednesday, January 20th for Inauguration Day on NBC Radio and Television. Back at the Orange Bowl, no score in the ball game. Seven minutes, 59 seconds remaining as Mosley goes deep for the Crimson Tide and getting set to punt. Ernie Coy, there's a pass from center. Here's the kick, just gets it away. It's a beautiful kick over the head of the intended receiver down on the five-yard line. Takes reverse English now and bounces all the way back up to the eight. But what a punt by Ernie Coy. However, Coy barely got that punt away. It was almost blocked. No score in the ball game. Seven minutes, 39 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. It'll be Alabama's ball now on their own eight-yard line as Texas now will dig in to try to stop them. A defensive battle so far between the Texas Longhorns, the number four team in the country, and Alabama, the national champions, who are undefeated. 10-0 for 1964. In at quarterback is Sloan. Harris and Ogden the halves. Bowman is in there at full. Going with the ball and driving straight ahead, Harris. Hudson Harris whirls his way over the 10-yard line as he goes off his own right guard and gets up to the 11-yard line. So, from... The eight-yard line, the 11, a gain of three for the Crimson Tide. It's second down, seven yards to go, no score in the ball game. As NBC sends the 1965 Orange Bowl Classic your way, the first night bowl game in history. Out of the huddle once again comes the Crimson Tide. Winging white to the right is the wingback Ogden. Now going in motion with the ball is Sloan. As he keeps it, he's at the 10, and down he goes under a host of white and orange jersey Texans. Sloan tried to go on a keeper play, sliding outside his own tackle and in, but he was met head on by the entire Texas defensive unit. It'll be third down. Billy Vessels at eight yards to go. Sloan is more of a runner than uh, Kristenick, the Texas quarterback. Sloan was the second leading ball carry on the Alabama team during the regular season, carrying the ball 95 times. 
All right, back to the ball game. Sloan calling the signals on third down, eight yards to go. Sloan dropping straight back, looking downfield, throws, and it's no good. And a pass off to the left, intended for Ogden, number 21. The ball bounced to the turf on the 21-yard line. Ogden dove for it, but the pass was a little bit low, and it'll be fourth down and eight yards to go. And again, we'll tell you, no score in this ball game. I'm sure that, Jim, that <clears throat> some of the football fans around the country can't believe this. Paul Bryan passing from his own 11-yard line. I think the significant thing about this is he has two of the finest quarterbacks in the country in Salon and Namath. All right, Billy. Buddy French is in the ball game. As going deep, Phil Harris. There's a pass from center, and there's the kick. And again, it's a beautiful kick away from the receiver and out of bounds on the far side. But it went out of bounds upfield on the 50-yard line. So uh, the Texas Longhorns are going to have pretty good field position. They'll have this ball now at midfield. As they put it in play, they have had the longest sustained drive of the evening so far in what's been a tremendously strong defensive battle. They moved the ball on their last drive, 33 yards, from their 25-yard line into Bama territory, down to the 43. And now the Longhorns with Krista Dickett quarterback, Harris and Coy, along with Phillips. Lamons is split wide to the right. Going with the ball is Kristinek, keeping it, passing downfield, and it's no good. Intended for Phil Harris. Almost intercepted that time by Mosley. Mosley came up and almost had the interception. So it'll be second down, 10 yards to go. Five minutes, 45 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. No score in the ballgame. It's been strictly a defensive battle so far between Alabama and Texas. Out of the huddle come the Texas Longhorns, the T formation. Wing right this time, the power to the right. With the ball is Kristinick going back, looking downfield, throws, and it is complete to Lamons and a beautiful catch on the 38-yard line. Lamons with Texans right around, rather Alabamans right around him. But a flag went down. A flag went down as he caught the ball, and interference, I believe, will be chalked off against Texas, uh, Alabama. That's right, against Alabama's Mosley. The ball is between the 38 and the 39-yard line. A long gain on the part of the Texas Longhorns. And they picked up another first down. Out of the huddle they come. Kristinick with the wing left this time. Harris set out on the wing to the left. With the ball is Coy, sweeping to the left. Goes to the 40 and down he goes. As the Crimson Tide comes in to make the stop on about the 39-yard line. Gilmer, once again, who is playing a fine ball game along with the linebacker Crane, and Bates coming in to make the stop just inside the 39-yard line. No gain in the play. It'll be second down and about 10 yards to go. No score in this ball game as we have five minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Texas, once again, sends Lamon to the right as the power this time is to the right out of the wing tee is taught by Darrell Royal. With the ball and a straight-ahead drive is Phillips, the fullback. He goes over his own center and gets down to about the 36-yard line as Simmons, submarine that time to make the tackle. I think this drive is showing basically Daryl Royal's coaching technique. He went through about 12 plays there without throwing a pass. Then he came back and off of French's short kick, he got the ball on the 50-yard line and then immediately threw two passes trying to take advantage of the situation. All right, Billy. Third down and seven yards to go and the power this time is to the left as Sauer is split to the right. Kristenick back. Looks for Sauer and can't find him on the 20-yard line. The pass is no good. Mosley, along with Andrews, again covering on the play. As George Sauer, who is the son of the former All-American from Nebraska and fine coach, was a fine coach, 6'1", 200 pounds, George Sauer, Jr., who is a pre-med student at Texas. The ball is on the 36-yard line of Alabama. It's fourth down and seven yards to go. We have no score in this ball game. As Ernie Coy drops back to punt. Mosley is deep for the Crimson Tide. Mosley is deep. Ernie Coy steps forward, boots the ball high in the air. And uh, Texas tries to down it. Can it goes into the end zone. A driving effort on the part of Texas to come in and down that ball. But they couldn't get to it. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line and be first and 10 for the Crimson Tide. Billy Vessels on their own 20. Well, this is the third time they've had the ball, and they've gained possession on the 20 twice and 11 twice, and so they really haven't had much of a chance to open up with their offense. Let's see what Bear Bryant will be going with this time. All 
All right, Billy. Four minutes, 17 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. No score in this ball game. A brief timeout down in the field. I almost thought he was going to get that punt there on the goal line. He just barely missed it by inches, and it would have been Alabama's ball on about the one. Unfortunately enough, uh, I must say that uh, maybe it's the night of the win or something. He turned and looked, and he could not see the ball. All right, Billy. In any event, it'll be Alabama's ball on the 20-yard line. The ball will be equal distance between the sidelines. We pause. Ten seconds for station identification. Jim Gibbons along with Billy Vessels as the Crimson Tide comes out of the huddle with Perkins split extremely wide to the left. Sloan at quarterback. In motion once again is Ray this time. Driving with the ball, the fullback as he gets across the 21 and down he goes. Nunnally along with Underwood coming in to make the stop. A gain of a yard in the play and that's all. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. Kelly is in at fullback now for the Crimson Tide. Ray is the right half for the wingback. Bowman is at left half. And Sloan is at quarterback. Cook is the right end. Perkins was in at left end. We'll check that for you in just a moment. No score in this ball game. On the handoff, quickly this time, to Kelly. And Kelly tries to go off his own right tackle and gets to about the 23-yard line. And that is all before Giles. Barney Giles along with Tommy Nobis coming in to make the stop. So it'll be third down, seven yards to go. No score in this ball game. Alabama and Texas in the Orange Bowl with three minutes, 24 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. We have not had a serious scoring threat. The deepest penetration so far has been that of Texas. They got to the 36-yard line. Alabama has not crossed the thir- their own 30-yard line so far. They have been bottled up the entire evening. Once again, Sloan with the ball, and he's going to be trapped back of that line of scrimmage and is and is brought down on the 20-yard line as the Texas defense came storming in that time, blitzing to bring him down back of the line of scrimmage on the 20. And it'll be fourth down and 10 yards to go. And Buddy French, the punter, who has an average of 42.4. That's his specialty. That's all he does for the Alabama Crimson Tide comes into punt. He's standing back on the five-yard line. Phil Harris along with Dixon, deep. Here's the kick, a beautiful high spiraling kick. Harris waits for it on the 40. He has it, dances around, gets to the 42, and down he goes on the 43-yard line. Joe Dixon came in to throw a block for him, but coming in to make the tackle was Steve Bowman. So it'll be first and 10 once again for the Texas Longhorns, and once again, Billy Vessels, they have pretty good field possession as we have timeout for Alabama. Jim, basically, Texas has kept Alabama in the hole so much tonight that they really haven't had a chance to let Alabama open up. I think Darrell's going to come back with Ernie Call this time and possibly start throwing a little to Phil Harris out here in the wing. All right, Billy. The referee, Red Gavette, his assistants tonight, the umpire is Max Stewart, the headlinesman is Harry Sharp, the field judge, Adrian Burke, the back judge is Jimmy Cole. Alabama with an undefeated record, 10-0 against Texas, 9-1. This year's national champions against last year's national champions, a scoreless ball game. I must like to talk on the Texas offense just a little. Basically, it's as close to a single wing as you could get. They're using the split, they're using the flanker, but with the running of Ernie Coyle as a tailback type, uh, with also a little fullback uh, movements through the center, uh, they're trying to break wide now. All right, strong left this time with Harris to the left. He is in motion with the ball. Is Kristen Eck. He fumbles it, and it's recovered by Alabama. Alabama has the ball at the 40-yard line as Cecil Doughty came in. He is the one that recovered. Stevens is the fellow who hit Kristen Eck. The ball popped high on the air, and the Crimson Tide has its first opportunity at a score at the 40-yard line of Texas. This is the first time tonight that Alabama has gotten into Texas territory, and they are just shy of the 40-yard line. The ball just about 20 yards in from the north side of the field. Beautiful defensive play on the part of Charlie Stevens there. This was a regular kind of a split T-type option play coming out, and before the quarterback had a chance, Stevens just completely overwhelmed him and knocked the ball loose. 
So it'll be first and ten for the Crimson Tide. Now on the 41-yard line. Let's call it of Texas. Sloan and at quarterback. Splitting wide to the left is the left end. In the eye formation, going with the ball is Bowman. Bowman gets across the 40 as he goes outside his own right tackle. Off the left side of the Texas line, and down he goes in the 39. A gain of two. It'll be second down and about eight yards to go. Jim, I think this is the opportunity that Bear Bryant's been looking for because Joe Namath is warming up over the sidelines. I think he now has the field position that he'd like to have to maybe take that big chance. Okay, Billy. Ogden is wide to the right. The left end is split to the left. Sloan drops straight back, looks downfield, throws, and it's no good. Intended for the left end, Ray Perkins. And here comes Joe Namath. Listen to the crowd as Joe Namath, 6'2", 194-pound senior. Called by Bear Bryant, the greatest football player he's ever seen. Bear Bryant is not real liberal with his praise. Ogden is wide to the right. Again, it's Perkins put to the left. Naaman behind the center in the T formation. Dropping straight back, looking down. Fires, and it is no good. Intended for Perkins and broken up beautifully by Joe Dixon. So it'll be fourth down and about eight yards to go. A good pass, but a great defensive effort on the part of Joe Dixon. David Ray is in the ball game, and with Alabama on the 39-yard line, Ray may try a field goal because he has the following wind. The wind is blowing in out of the east. Alabama has their backs to the east. This ball will be placed down on the 45, so it'll be a 55-yard effort. He's connected on 12 of 17 field goal tries this year. There's the pass from center. There is the kick. And it is not long enough. Taken in the end zone by Texas, it'll be brought out to the 20-yard line and be first and 10 for the Longhorns on the 20. So it's a scoreless ball game with a minute nine seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Alabama and Texas. And Alabama, with their first scoring opportunity, were not able to move against this strong defensive unit of Texas. Red Cavett, the referee, places the ball down in the 20, just equal distance between the sidelines. No score in the ball game. Texas Longhorns with Kristinick, Harris, Coy, and Stockton. And Texas uh, flip-flops their line to the strong or the weak side, depending on where Harris goes. With the ball is the fullback, and he doesn't go anywhere. Down he goes, right at the line of scrimmage. Phillips, the fullback, took the handoff from Kristinick, and he was hit just as he got the ball. He wanted to go off his own left guard. So it'll be second down and 10 yards to go. Curley and Gilmer coming in to make the stop. Preet Gilmer was on him before he could make the handoff then. A good, very good defensive play. Out of the huddle once again in the team formation. Texas Longhorns, no score in the ball game. Wing right this time. With the ball is Coy. Coming to his right, turns the corner, gets across the 25 to 30. He's at the 40. He's at midfield. He's at the 45, the 40, down to the 30. The 20, the 15, he may go all the way. He's in there for a touchdown. Ernie Coy on a beautiful 80-yard run for a touchdown. What a run by Coy. He took the pitch out, came to his right. Turned the corner on the near side of the field, got up to the 40, found blocking, came straight up this sideline to the opposite 40, veered to his left and went all the way in for a score. And now, trying for the point after is Conway, and he hasn't missed so far this year. 24 of 24. There it is. It's good. And Texas leads by a score of 7 to nothing. Absolutely beautiful run there by Ernie Coy. It's the play they've been running all, all the time here. It's where they pitch out to him. He runs off and then tries to cut back between the guard pulling and the wing back, Phil Harris, who's blocked in on the linebacker. He did it so beautifully, cutting back to the midfield, picking up his blockers coming from the far side. All right, and Vince Burns, a little disconsolate who's spotting here for Alabama, says Alabama's been a great come from behind team. Okay, Vinny. 
I'd like to add to that, they came behind in three of their last four games this year, and that's the reason why Bear Bryant thinks this team has pride, and he wins on pride. Okay, Bill, ready to kick off. Now is number 31, Conway, for Texas. Alabama will receive... Conway with the ball on the 40-yard line. Texas downfield, or uh, upfield rather, as Alabama's downfield ready to receive. Texas leads 7 to nothing. 23 seconds remaining. It's Gilmer who's deep. He's at the 2 to the 10. He's to the uh, 20-yard line. Ogden, rather, with that ball, number 21. And he gets across the 25, up to about the 29-yard line before he's brought down. Ray Ogden who was deep, standing on the goal line, came up and took it on the two and carried it all the way back 27 yards to the 29-yard line. Three seconds remaining. Two, the first quarter will be over before another play gets underway. That's the end of the first quarter. End of the first quarter with the score, Texas 7, Alabama nothing. Meet the Press, America's headline-making press conference of the air offers you a front-row seat each week for judging world events. Presidents, prime ministers, even kings are on the impressive guest list of world leaders who sit before Meet the Press microphones. And posing challenging questions to these renowned guests each Sunday are panels of the nation's top newsmen, getting the facts you need to form your own opinions of the men and the issues in the news. Meet the Press is your chance to hear for yourself the views and voices of people in the forefront of national and international events, those who make and shape decisions of our time. Don't miss this exciting, informative listening. Now in its 19th year, Meet the Press is produced by Lawrence E. Spivak and heard on NBC Radio. Join us this week for News in the Making on Meet the Press. Consult your local listings for the exact time in your area. Jim Gibbons along with Billy Vessels here at the Orange Bowl as we prepare to go into the second quarter. It'll be Alabama's ball on their own 29-yard line. They trail in the ball game by a score of 7 to nothing. An electrifying 80-yard run by Ernie Coy. Ogden splits out wide to the left. Sloan is in at quarterback calling signals for the Crimson Tide. With the ball, driving straight ahead is Bowman as he tries to go off his own right guard and doesn't go very far. Gets up to about the 32-yard line, a gain of three in the play, and that's not too bad. He was pushed back to the 30, but the forward progress of the ball is at the 32, so it'll be right on the 32-yard line, and it'll be second down and about seven yards to go for Alabama. Sloan at quarterback, Bowman at the left half, Kelly is at full, Ogden is at the right half, Tolleson is in now at the left end, Cook at the right end. Ogden once again wide to the right as Sloan goes back to pass, looks downfield, throws long, has a man in the open, it's Ogden. He has it on the 30-yard line of Texas. Down he goes on the 26-yard line. A long play from Sloan to Ogden. Ogden took that ball on the far side of the field on about the 30-yard line, 35-yard line of Texas and carried it down to the 27-yard line before he was brought down. Jimmy had to stop and wait for that ball. If he, if he did not have to stop there, I think he would have been all the way for a touchdown because there wasn't anyone within 20 yards of him. But he had to wait on the pass from Salon. Beautiful pass play, and uh, obviously someone was out of position on it because he was so in the clear. I like think you look now for Darrell Rawls line to start putting the big rush on the Alabama passer because this is the defense which he likes to use against a pass and attack. Consequently, I think we can look for some draw plays coming up from Bowman and Ogden in there. So here they are in scoring position, trying to come from behind. Let's see what they can do. 42 yards on that play, Billy, on the pass from Sloan to Ogden. Ray Ogden is a senior. He's 6'4", 217 pounds. He has good height and pretty good speed. He was finally hauled down by Texas. Gary Moore, the sophomore safety for the Longhorns, who brought him down inside the 27-yard line, a gain of 42 yards in the play. Score is 7-0. Texas lead, but Alabama threatened here early in the second quarter. 13 minutes, 55 seconds, and that slight possibility of a shower is now 
in existence because uh, it's an actuality, because some of the folks out in front are arising and putting on their rain capes. Out of the huddle comes the Crimson Tide, Sloan calling the signals. He gives to Bowman. Bowman goes over his own left guard inside the 25, down to about the 23-yard line before he's brought down by Tommy Nobis. The fine All-American candidate, linebacker and guard from Texas. The ball is on the 23-yard line, a gain of about uh, three yards in the play. It's second down and seven yards to go for Alabama. They trail in the ball game by a score of 7-0. Their ball in Texas territory on the 23-yard line. Sloan once again calling the signals, going back to pass, looks downfield, throws, and it's no good. Intended for Tolleson. Tolleson was open, Billy Vessels, but the ball was thrown into the ground. It was thrown in the ground, and I thought Sloan had plenty of time on that play. It was a quick look-in pass to Tolleson, and again, he was wide open, and he would have been in for a touchdown. Ball might been, uh, have been just a little bit wet, uh, Billy, as that brief shower. It's possible that uh, the ball sitting in the ground as it was got wet. In any event, it was low and into the ground, but his man was open. Same offensive formation with Tolleson split wide to the right. Calling the signals is Sloan. In motion is Ogden. With the ball is Sloan. He pitches back to Kelly. Kelly's at the 20, down to the 15 as he turns the corner and gets inside to the 13-yard line. Wesley Kelly took the pitch out from Sloan as Sloan was gliding behind the line to his right. He pitched back to Kelly. Kelly turned the corner at the 25-yard line, went out downfield to the 13-yard line for a first down for Alabama. And Alabama has come storming back from their own 29-yard line. The long pass play from Sloan to Ogden. And now another first down on the part of Leslie Kelly. Tolleson once again has split wide to the left. In motion is Ogden, calling the signal Sloan. Sloan pitches back to Kelly. Kelly goes to his left, turns the corner, gets down to about the 10-yard line before he's brought down. Again, Leslie Kelly, this time in the same play to the opposite side of the field. He was brought down after he picked up three yards. It'll be second down, seven yards to go for a first down, 10 yards away from Pater. The score, Texas 7, Alabama nothing. 12 minutes, 15 seconds remaining here in the first half. Texas on an electrifying 80-yard touchdown run by Ernie Coy, but Alabama, true to their tradition of coming from behind, have stormed back downfield for a second down and seven. With the ball is Bowman. Bowman goes over his own left guard down to about the eight-yard line before he's brought down. Bowman in a quick burst behind his own left guard, the right side of the Texas line, gets down to about the eight-yard line before Tommy Nobis came in to make the stop. And so it'll be third down and five yards to go. The ball is just about 19 yards in from the north side of the playing field. The wide side to the right of the Alabama team. So they'll have the wide side to this side, and that's the way they're flanking Tolleson. He's coming out to the wide side of the playing field. Ogden is out of the backfield on a flanker to the left. Sloan coming to this side, looking downfield, throws, and it's no good. Intended for Tolleson, right at the goal line. Very well defended by Texas. Gary Moore, number 18, was the first one to hit that ball to knock it away from the hands of the receiver, Tolleson. And so it'll be fourth down and five yards to go, and David Ray comes into the ball game to try a field goal. Score, 7-0. Texas leads, 11 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. David Ray will try a field goal. He's connected on 12 out of 17. He's pretty accurate from this point. Holding will be Edwards, or, or Elmore, rather. There's the kick. It's no good. No good. And the score remains. Texas 7, Alabama nothing. The kick was wide to the right. And so Texas, the Longhorns, who were last year's national champions and would love to knock off this year's national champions, Time out in the field with Texas 7, Alabama nothing. This is Gene Rayburn, your monitor host on Saturday nights. Anyone who travels in today's jet airliner should make a special effort to tune in this weekend and listen to one of my guests, Fred McClement. 
Now, he's the author of a new and provocative book, and uh, you want to hear what he has to say about the reasons for some of the disastrous crashes of recent years. Now, here's how he explained why pilots sometimes can't avoid bad weather, even if they see it coming. In today's high traffic, where planes are assigned every thousand feet, and there are thunderstorms en route or in these areas, the aircraft cannot waver in its path. The pilot may like to try and get out of it, but uh, he can't. He must stick to his air corridor. The air traffic controller who is guiding him in cannot see these storms. He's concerned at the moment with the blip of the aircraft on his radar. Hear more of what aviation expert Fred McClement has to say when he appears as my guest on Saturday Night Monitor right here on NBC Radio. Back to the ball game, and Kristinek hands off to Phillips, and Phillips drives over his own right tackle and gets up to about the 24-yard line. A gain of four yards in the play. It'll be second down and six yards to go. Texas ball on their own 24. They lead the ball game by a score of seven to nothing. Out of the huddle come the Longhorns. Wing to the right. In motion is Harris. He takes the pitch back with the ball, turns the corner, comes upfield, gets across the 25 up to about the 26-yard line before he's brought down by Freeman. Seven to nothing to score. A new record in distance from the line of scrimmage, Ernie Coy. And they're crediting him with a 79-yard run. Actually, the ball was between the 20 and the 21-yard line. We gave him 80 yards. But officially, he has been chalked up with a 79-yard touchdown run. Once again, it's wing right out of the wing T formation. The pitch back is to Coy. Coy's back to pass. Throws intended for Harris. He can't get to it. Almost reached it as Ernie Coy took the pitch back from Kristinek, was back in the 20-yard line, and threw a floating pass that just hung up in the air as Harris almost ran under it to receive it, but he couldn't get to it. Defending on the play was Mosley and Andrews. So it'll be fourth down and four yards to go for the Texas Longhorns. The ball on the 26-yard line. Going deep now for Alabama is Billy Mosley. Billy is a junior. He's 6'1", 185 pounds, from Thomaston, Alabama. Back to punt is Ernie Coy, the touchdown maker of the evening, as Texas leads 7-0 on Coy's brilliant run from scrimmage. There's a pass from center. Coy gets it away, a long, high kick waiting for it. As there's a flag on the play as Alabama... With the ball, number 21 for Alabama, Hogan goes down and about the 26-yard line, but there's a flag upfield. Long, high kick on the part of Ernie Coy in Alabama. Ogden took the ball on the 25, and down he went. It appears that Alabama was offsides, and if that's so, I think that will give Texas enough for a first, first down on the Alabama 30-yard line. All right, Billy, it appears to be that because uh, Alabama is sending back in uh, what looks like their offensive team as the ball comes back upfield. Two flags on the play, one on this side, one floating to the turf, and that's exactly what it is. First and ten, an offside penalty, a costly one against the Crimson Tide, moving the ball up to the 31-yard line. Texas ball on their own 31, and the Longhorns lead this ball game with 10 minutes remaining in the first half by a score of 7 to nothing. Out of the huddle comes Texas, as Sauer is extremely wide to the right. Hudson is in at quarterback. He's passing long. Sauer is in the open. He has it on the 20, the 15, the 10. He'll score. A 69-yard scoring play on the part of the Texas Longhorns as Darrell Royal sent in his co-captain, a senior, Jay Hudson. And Sauer, his top receiver, and Sauer went downfield on the right side, and Hudson threw a beautiful pass to him, a strike for a touchdown. 69 yards, and now Conway will try to kick his 26th point after touchdown. There it is, and it's good. And the Texas Longhorns lead by a score of 14 to nothing. There's a timeout on the field with the score. Texas 14, Alabama nothing. 
This is Chad Huntley, NBC News, inviting you to tune in to my NBC radio weekday program, Emphasis Plain Talk, on this NBC station. On Emphasis Plain Talk, I try to present both the unique and provocative developments that occur in this fast-moving and ever-changing world. Also, I occasionally dip into the Daily Mail, which I receive, and from it comment on the offbeat, the humorous, and compelling letters that reflect the thoughts of people across the country. On NBC Radio's emphasis, you also hear such outstanding NBC newsmen and personalities as Frank McGee, Nancy Dickerson, Frank Blair, Arlene Francis, Howard Whitman, Lindsay Nelson, and the award-winning NBC News Corps of Correspondents reporting from their outposts around the world. Hear them all eight times daily, Monday through Friday, on radio's most informative and entertaining new feature series, Emphasis, on this NBC radio station. Jim Gibbons, along with Billy Vessels, with nine minutes, 51 seconds, as the Texas Longhorns are out in front by a score of 14 to nothing. Two long, electrifying scoring plays in the part of Texas. As Conway now gets set to kick off, Ogden, who has had a touchdown run back of 106 yards, is deep, but he doesn't get the ball. It's Harris. He fumbles it, picks it up on the five. He is at the 10, gets to the 14-yard line, and down he goes. Driving in to make the stop was Conway, who kicked off on the 14-yard line. And Joe Namath is in at quarterback for Alabama. Tim, I can't emphasize enough the position that Texas has put Alabama in all night. They haven't had but one decent chance at trying to open up and score. And, of course, they were stopped at that moment. All right, Billy, it's first and ten. The ball is placed on the 13-yard line. Driving with the ball, Alabama's Bowman. Steve Bowman, who comes straight up the middle from the 13 up to about the 15 for about a two-yard gain before Lacey and Bedrick came in to make the stop. It'll be second down and eight yards to go for the Crimson Tide. They trail in the ball game by a score of 14 to nothing as Texas is out in front with eight minutes, 52 seconds remaining here in the first half. Tollison is wide to the left. Joe Namath back to pass, takes his time, fires downfield. It's complete on the 35. The ball carrier is up to the 40 and is brought down on the 40-yard line. Tollison, who had split to the left, took this perfect strike from Joe Namath and was brought down at the 40-yard line. Again, all the way from the 15 up to the 40. A gain of 25 yards in the play and a first down for Alabama. And you can bet your life now, Billy Vessels, the tide will be taken to the air. They trail by a score of 14 to nothing. Ogden is wide to the left, Tollison to the right. There's the pass. It's complete from Namath, who stri- drops straight back, and indeed he throws that ball well. As again, he finds Tommy Tollison on the 48-yard line. An eight-yard gain in the play. It'll be second down and two to go. Jim, in just two plays, he's convinced me why he is the most solved after pro, spot, pro prospect this year. He really throws that ball, and he throws it quick. All right, Billy, it's Tollison this time to the right as Ogden is split to the left. And again, name it back to pass, looks downfield, throws long for Tollison, and it is no good. Tollison, watch the ball, the drop to the turf on the 20-yard line. Defending very well in the play, King and Moore. So it goes as an incompleted pass, and it will be third down and two to go. Ray Perkins now in the ball game for Alabama. Perkins will be playing the left end. But Alabama, like Texas, does a flip-flop with their line. They switch them over from right to left, and this time Perkins is wide to the right. Ogden is just set out, going with the ball and driving up to midfield, trying to pick up that first down as Leslie Kelly. And the question is now, did he get the first down as he got right up to about the midfield stripe? It'll be fourth down, an inches to go, or it'll be a first down. We've seen no signal yet. Billy, perhaps you have. It looks like it's going to be fourth down. This is going to be, let's see if Bear, the new Bear, as much as he's been passing from his 11, is he going to go for it on the 10? I think he will. He's left Namath in there. Let's oh. see if they can make it. All right, Billy, he's trailing 14 to nothing, and he's going to go for the yard to try to pick it up. I don't know whether he got it or not. Leslie Kelly went right over the center, and I don't know whether he got it or not. It's going to be awfully close. The entire center of the Texas line 
came charging in. We'll leave that up to the referee. It's a first down. First down for Alabama. Six minutes, 42 seconds remaining here in the first half. Score, Texas 14, Alabama nothing. If you joined us a little bit late, two tremendous scoring plays on the part of Texas Longhorns, electrifying the crowd as one for 79 yards, the other for 69. One a run, the other a pass. Name it back to pass, looking downfield, and it's no good. Pass was intended for Perkins. And Mr. Joe Namath was dumped hard that time by Texas. Texas with the rush on. It was Talbert, Dyron Talbert and Lacey who came in to uh, throw Joe Namath to the turf. Very legal tackles, mind you, but they were blitzing in that time and dropped him to the turf. It'll be second down and 10 to go. It's one that a quarterback will remember, too. All right, Billy, Ray is in the ballgame now, and he's wide to the right again, Namath. Completes the pass at the 40, and the ball carrier is upended as he gets across the 40. It was Bowman down to the 38-yard line. It was Trimble, number 20, not 30. Trimble, who is in that ball game now, and he took the ball down on the 38-yard line, and it's another first down for Alabama, and the Crimson Tide now has sustained this drive from their own 13 down to the Texas 38. An amazing pass. Here he was backing up and threw the ball 15 yards. Ogden, Ray, Namath, and Tremble in the backfield. Namath is back to pass. Throws long. He's got a man in the open. Can he get it? He has it. Is it in there? No, he dropped it. He had it in his hands, but he couldn't hang on to it in the end zone. It was Ray Perkins. A great effort on the part of Perkins. He had that ball in his hand, held it momentarily, and a drop to the turf in the end zone. A long, incompleted pass. Score is 14 to nothing. Texas leads. A 79-yard record-breaking touchdown for Ernie Coy and a 69-yard passing play on the part of Hudson to Sauer. Joe Namath back to pass, and he completes it. This time to Tolleson. He's across the 25, down to about the 23-yard line. A first down as Namath obviously and limping on the field is nevertheless throwing that ball. We have a timeout for Texas. Timeout for the Texas Longhorns. Five minutes, 16 seconds remaining here in the first half. We'll pause now 10 seconds for station identification. You are tuned to A10 on your dial, WGY Schenectady, the smoothest sound around. Jim Gibbons along with Billy Vessels here at the Orange Bowl. Beautiful night, a little cloudy, but uh, very balmy, 70 degrees. We had a little sprinkling of rain. There were a few showers before the game, but so far the weatherman here at Miami has behaved exactly as the uh, Chamber of Commerce would like to have him behave, and that's very, very well. What a colorful spectacle. Just as beautiful as you could possibly imagine. The bands down in the field taking up the tempo. Alabama across the way. Texas on this side. Numerous high school bands. As we mentioned to you early, a number of the fans uh, with sweaters and just regular suit coats, some of them in their shirt sleeves, watching out here. The fountain at the right of the field, the east end of the field, beautifully displayed with palm trees, the scoreboard with the big NBC sign above it, and the scoreboard reflecting the 14 to nothing score in favor of Texas over Alabama. But Alabama has the ball in Texas territory on the 23-yard line, and they've driven all the way from their own 13, and it's first and 10. Name it, back to pass, looks downfield, throws, it's complete on about the 10-yard line to Wayne Cook, the right end, who switched over. He crossed over and took it right at the 10-yard line and just got inside. It'll be another first down, first and goal this time for the Crimson Tide on about the 9.5-yard line of Texas. A beautifully placed pass. It was just over the head of the linebacker, but yet far enough for the receiver and ahead of the defending halfback. Tolleson splits wide to the right this time from his right end, left end position. 
as Joe Namath drops straight back, looks downfield, throws, and it is no good. Almost intercepted by King, intended for Tolleson, but it was almost intercepted by King. It'll be second down, goal to go on the nine-yard line. Texas leads the ball game, 14 to nothing. Alabama has moved all the way from their own 13-yard line. The passing of Joe Namath. Six feet two, 194 pounds, a senior operating on a knee that was injured just last Monday. Out of the huddle, once again in the eye formation, with the ball driving straight ahead, is Trimble. He gets down to about the seven-yard line as he tries to go right up the middle. This Tommy Nebos reminds me so much of Leroy Jordan, who was a great defensive linebacker from Alabama last year, two years ago. Nebos covers more ground than anyone that I have ever seen. All right, Billy, out of the huddle comes Alabama. And it's Ray this time that's wide to the right. Namath throwing down the middle. It's complete for a touchdown. A beautiful catch for a touchdown by Tremble. It's going off under the scoreboard. The sound you heard, an 87-yard scoring drive culminated on a 7-yard scoring play from Namath to Trimble. And Ray now will try to add the extra point. Elmore holding. There it is. It's good. And Texas lead has been cut 14-7. to across the way standing and playing Gold Bama for Alabama on their 87-yard drive. David Ray will come in to kick off. Phil Harris, no relation to Hudson Harris. Phil Harris, who plays for Texas. Hudson Harris, who plays for Alabama. Phil Harris is deep along with Green. Here's the kick. Going in the direction of Harris on the 8-yard line. He's at the 10, the 15, the 20, up to about the 27 or 28-yard line before he's brought down. And they place it just over the 28-yard line. Paul Crane coming in to make the stop as a member of the Crimson Tide is hurt. We'll check his number with our Alabama assistant. Vince Burns here in just a moment. It looked like 24 to me, but I don't know whether it was or not. Mosley. Looks like Mosley has hurt his leg. Mosley hurt in the play, and Alabama will miss him. He's their defensive safety, and he's done a fine job. But it's Texas ball at the moment on their own 28-yard line. They lead 14-7. to Kristinick back to pass. Looks downfield. Throws in the flat. Complete to Sauer on the 38, and Sauer steps out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. A little short pass out in the flat. Sauer, George Sauer, took it over the 35, right down below us on the near sidelines, and stepped out of bounds on the 39 and a half yard line. Creed Gilmer was there to drive him out. And now Hudson is back in. He's the one who threw the touchdown pass to Sauer earlier in the ball game. He's back in at quarterback. In motion is Harris. Hudson on the keeper play drives over his own right tackle and goes to about the 43 or 44 yard line before he's brought down by Giles. Rather by Bates. Tim Bates, the linebacker, came in to make the stop on the 44. So it'll be second down and six yards to go now for the Longhorns. Texas Longhorns lead the ball game 14 to 7. Three minutes, 24 seconds remaining here in the first half. Well, 72,000 fans came expecting to see a great battle between two great teams, and that's what they're seeing. Hudson back to pass. Throws deep, and it is no good. Going deep on the play was Ernie Coy. Hudson Harris defending, but the ball was over the heads of both the defender and the receiver and out of bounds. And it'll be third down and six yards to go for Texas. Their ball on their own 44-yard line. They lead the ball game by a score of 14 to 7.
Texas huddling back on the 35-yard line. George Sauer wide to the left. Barney Giles, who's in the ball game, is wide to the right. Driving straight ahead with the ball is the fullback. Phillips, and Phillips gets across the 45, up to about the 48 or 49-yard line, and the no went up because they set the ball back from the 49 to the 48 and a half. So it'll be fourth down and about a yard to go, and we have two minutes, 53 seconds remaining. Stockton comes into the ball game at fullback for Phillips. Tom Stockton. Where's jersey number 36? He's six feet tall, 198 pounds. And on fourth down, it looks like Texas is going to go for the yardage. They lead. With the ball is Coy. And Coy has that first down as he glides to his right and then turns the corner, going off his own right tackle. Outside the tackle, inside the end. Off the left side of Alabama, down to the 49-yard line of the tide. And he has the first down. Here you have supposedly the two most conservative coaches in the country, and both times they've had the ball on the 50-yard, fourth down situation, they went for it. First down, Billy, for the Texas Longhorns on Alabama's 49. Hudson back to throw, looks downfield, throws, and it is no good. Almost intercepted by Tim Bates, number 56, 6'1", 188-pound junior. He had his hands on that ball. It was intended for Giles, Barney Giles who is now playing the right offensive end. He's 5'11", 194 pounds, and he is from Marshall, Texas. Hicks Green is in in one of the running spots for the Longhorns. Hudson dropping straight back this time, throws, and it is no good. Behind the line of scrimmage, intended for Phil Harris. Broke it up by Creed Gilmer. So it'll be third down and 10 yards to go. The ball is just about equal distance between the sidelines. Texas owns it in Alabama territory on the 49-yard line. Creed Gilmer certainly played that play nice that time. It was an attempt at a screen pass, and he got in behind the blockers. Of course, they can't block until the ball's been received and broke it up before he could make the catch. One minute, 59 seconds remaining. On third down, 10 yards to go. Hudson calling the signals. He's dropping back to pass. Hit just as he throws, but he completes it on a beautiful pass down the far sideline as the receiver, George Sauer, takes it over the 35 and goes out of bounds on about the 33-yard line. Another first down for the Longhorns as Ray, David Ray, drove him out of bounds, but a beautiful completion on the part of Hudson to George Sauer. That's a touchdown combination of a few moments ago. Ball is on the uh, inbound hash mark in the far side of the field and splitting now to the wide side of the field is Texas with the power to the left. Hudson back to pass and it is no good. Deflected upfield by one of the linemen of Alabama and it bounces to the turf. A minute 49 remaining here in the first half. Score Texas 14, Alabama 7. Beautiful defensive play there. That shows you the value of how a defensive lineman can help the men in the secondary if they'll keep those hands up while they're rushing the passer. That was a beautifully deflected pass, and it would have looked like a sure completion. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go for Texas. They lead this ball game 14 to 7 as Barney Giles is split extremely wide to the left. Hudson dropping back to pass. He's being pressured back in the 40. Elects to run with the ball at the 35, at the 30. Out of bounds on about the 27 or 28-yard line. Hudson, the co-captain, quarterbacking for Texas, couldn't find anybody open. Chasing him in the backfield was Creed Gilmer. He just got away and got inside the 30 and out of bounds on the 28-yard line. A fine effort on the part of Hudson. It looked like uh, Billy Vessels, he was going to be trapped back in the backfield. Looked like it was going to be a, a very severe loss there for Texas, but he kept running, and he came on and, and picked up some very needed yardage and in a good position now to make the first and 10. Third down, five to go for Texas. As again, it's Barney Giles, the sophomore, who split wide to the right. The wide side of the field. Hudson back to pass, and the ball is battered just as he throws it. Big number 75, Frank McClendon, 6'3", 231 pounds. From Guntersville, Alabama. Back batted that ball to the turf. Almost intercepted it. So it'll be fourth down and five yards to go now for the Longhorns. 
They lead the ball game by a score of 14 to 7 with a minute 39 seconds remaining here in the first half. And Conway, the very fine kicker for the Longhorns, comes in to try a field goal on a slight angle from the 35-yard line. It will be a 45-yard effort. College ball, the goal post are behind it. Block! <laughs> Alabama picks up the ball and runs with it and gets it up to about the 40-yard line. A wild scramble. I thought the ball was going to be killed at the 35. But I believe it may be Texas ball, as the ball carrier fumbled the ball. We'll see now whether Texas got it or Alabama got it. Let's see who owns that football. Texas is calling timeout. Texas ball. The ball carrier from Alabama across the way fumbled the ball. And when he fumbled it, it was a free ball, and Texas, I didn't get the number of the uh, Texas uh, Longhorn who picked it up, but apparently Billy Vessels, Texas recovered that ball. Oh, what a, what a break that is. There it is, 14 to nothing, going in second, end of the second quarter, and uh, trying to, to stay out of a little trouble by uh, adding on a field goal, and Alabama put a great rush on there, Jim, and uh, blocked it. The man picked it up during the wild scramble. The man picked it up and ran with it, and then fumbled upon being tackled. 14 to 7, may I be corrected. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what I've been thinking about is name of the way he brought them back in the, in the Georgia game and scored two yeah, touchdowns, and I thought they were behind, and possibly the duplication of that. Oh, that's has right, been riding with me quite strongly the way he came in and directed that one drive. 14-7 to 7 is the score, but Texas has this football now down in Bama territory, down on the 38-yard line. A minute, 19 seconds remaining here in the first half. Hudson is in at quarterback, drops straight back, looks downfield. He'll be hit if he doesn't get out of there, and down he goes, back of the line of scrimmage on about the 42-yard line. A scramble for that ball and a flag downfield on the 22-yard line. There's a flag downfield. Jim Simmons is the one who came in to make the stop. But there's a flag downfield and there may be a penalty against Alabama for interference. That's exactly what it is. And instead of a loss in the play back in the 42-yard line, Texas will now move down where that flag has been dropped on the 22-yard line. An official is standing right on the 23. We didn't get the uh, gentleman who caused the infraction from Alabama, but it was against George Sauer, and that's what it is, offensive pass interference, waiting to see where they mark this ball down. They're walking it off from the 22 down inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line. And the Texas Longhorns, with a minute nine seconds remaining here in the first half, leading the ball game by a score of 14 to seven, have another scoring opportunity. A few moments ago, or a few seconds, Alabama blocking a field goal, picked up the ball. They didn't have to because it was fourth down. It would have been their ball, but they ran with it. It became a free ball. Ernie Coy takes the handoff and darts over his own left guard inside the 10, down to about the seven-yard line before he's brought down. Ernie Coy, the big left halfback, 6'2", 220 pounds, got inside the 10, down to the 7. He has scored tonight in a record-breaking 79-yard run. Hudson back to pass, looks out and throws, and it is. Is it good? I believe it is. Down at about the three-yard line and a beautiful catch by Pete Lamon. Lamon made a tremendous catch down on the two-and-a-half-yard line. He was falling down as he caught that ball, well defended, incidentally, but by Ray. But the ball is down on about the two-and-a-half-yard line. We have 37 seconds remaining in the first half. Time definitely a factor. So it'll be first down, goal to go for the Texas Longhorns as Hudson, the senior, has sparked the Texas team with his fine passing. But a brilliant catch that time by Pete Lamons, a junior. Out of the huddle comes Texas a little prematurely as Red Gavette, the referee who had gone over to the sidelines, apparently to have a word with Darrell Royal, now comes back in, and a substitution now comes in for the Longhorns, number 64, Frank Bedrick, who will come in at left guard. Coming out of the ball game, number 67, Goad, Howard Goad. In the backfield for Texas, Hudson at quarterback, 
Phil Harris is at right half, Ernie Coy at left half, and Phillips at full. Here they go, and going with the ball is Coy. Flag goes down as Coy is right at that goal line. But there's a flag, a marker on the play. And now let's see who the infraction is against. We'll see where the ball is placed down. Apparently it was against Alabama. The ball is just a foot away from pay dirt. We have not uh, seen the indication. The ball is resting right on the one foot line. Offside against Alabama. Decline. Obviously because uh, they get only a, a yard on the penalty. They got a yard and a half on the play. So it's second down now and about a foot to go for Texas on Alabama's one foot line. Texas leads 14 to 7. 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. Hudson calling the signals for Texas. Hudson waiting for the pass from center. He gets it, gives it to Coy. Coy is in there for a touchdown, going off his own right tackle. who took the pitch back from Hudson, got the blocking on the right side of his line, went over, and now Conway tries for the point after, and he boots it through there perfectly, and Texas lead by a score of 21 to 7. Jim, this is going to be a most damaging psychological blow to Alabama to be going to the dressing room in 27 seconds after... Uh, having been scored on like that is kind of a hard thing to be sitting there, and that's the thing that you're remembering most. Well, that's true, Billy, and that uh, Alabama didn't have to battle for that ball. It was there. It was fourth down. They had blocked the kick. But, of course, once they picked it up and started running with it, then uh, fumbled it. It was a free ball. But had they elected just to uh, let it there, they would have had the ball upfield. But, of course, in the hustle and the battle, we're not criticizing Alabama because in the excitement... Whoever it was that picked up that ball wanted to move with it. He was hit, fumbled the ball, Texas uh, picked it up, and Hudson and Coy, and the great catch by Lamons resulted in a touchdown. There's the kickoff, a low kickoff. Harris picks it up on about the 8. He's back to the 10. The 15 goes to the far side at the 20. He's at the 25, up to the 30, and out of bounds on about the 31 to 32-yard line. Hudson Harris. Six feet tall, 184-pound senior. Took the ball on the eight-yard line. Was chased out of bounds across the field, they say, on the 31. So it'll be first and ten. Now for Alabama. Ray Ogden is in at the wingback. Joe Namath is in at quarterback. Joe Namath, who apparently is going to the American League, New York Jets, and Ernie Coy, who apparently is going to go to the New York Giants of the National Football League. Two great players. Both starring here tonight. Coy has two touchdowns. Ernie, uh, Joe Namath has passed for one. Namath back to pass, looking downfield. He is very cool. Throws, and it's intercepted. Intercepted. And the ball carrier is back to midfield. He's down to the 45, still in his feet. It's Pete Lamons as he gets inside the 40. The pass from Namath intercepted by Pete Lamons, and Lamons carries it back into Alabama territory down to about the 42 or 41 yard line. We'll see where they mark it down as the players unpile. Their first half is all over. That's the end of the first half with a score Texas 21, Alabama 7. A tremendous spectacle, I think, um, down here, and certainly has proven uh, successful. It was just gorgeous, uh, and it's been a fine game, 21 to 7. It's going to be up to Alabama now to get back into the ball game. They'll kick off as uh, Texas will receive, ready to go, and it's uh, Ray who's uh, kicking off, waiting for the ball in the end zone. Texas kicks green, comes out with the ball. He's at the 20, gets to the 25, and falls forward to the 26 yard line before he goes down. Green took that ball right down to the goal line. Looks like a Texas man has been hurt. Number 70 is John Elliott, who comes limping off of the field. Ball will be on the 26-yard line. It'll be first and 10 now for Texas. 
Coming in to make the tackle was uh, Cecil Dowdy of Alabama. And so to just bring you up to date in the events you haven't been with us in this first half, Texas leads 21 to 7. They have three touchdowns, two of them long scoring plays, and the other a ground out touchdown at the closing end of the half. Green with the ball, and down he goes, back of the line of scrimmage. Hicks Green, who stayed in and took the handoff from his quarterback, Kristenick, or is it Hudson that's in there? We'll check that for you in just a moment. Hudson came in and quarterbacked most of the uh, second quarter and a portion of the first quarter for the Texas Longhorns after Kristenick was taken out. But it's Kristenick, Marv Kristenick, who's in there at quarterback now, with Texas leading 21-7. Second down, 11 yards to go. The ball is at the 25-yard line. With the ball is Ernie Coy. He slips as he tries to turn the corner as he glided to his left and tried to go behind his own left tackle. The cut up field, down he went on the wet turf. Another loss of a yard in the play on the 24-yard line. Jim, this Alabama team has come back real charged up, and I think we're going to see a most exciting second half here, and I hope our listeners will be staying with us till the end. All right, Billy, the ball is just about equal distance between the sidelines. Texas ball, third down, 13 yards to go. Kristenick glides to his right, keeps the ball, gets to the 25, spins away from a tackler and goes out of bounds on about the 29-yard line. Actually, he had moved up field across the 30 to the 35, but they say he stepped out of bounds on about the 29-yard line. So it'll be fourth down and still plenty of yards to go, and... Ernie Coy will get set to punt for Texas. The Longhorns lead the ball game 21 to 7. Alabama's Crimson Tide digging in as they stop this offensive gesture on the part of Texas and now will send deep. Ray Perkins is one of them. Along with Hudson Harris. Harris on the far side. There's the pass from center. Here's the kick. A high kick, but not particularly long. They're not calling for the fair catch. The ball bounces on the 35 and will be downed as it takes reverse English on about the 37-yard line. So it will be Alabama's ball in pretty good field position on their own 37-yard line. They trail in the ball game by a score of 21 to 7. Alabama will see now whether they send in Joe Namath, their quarterback, who took them for a touchdown, their only touchdown of the night, an 87-yard march in the second quarter. Namath is in there. Bowman is in at the left half. Wall is in at fullback, and Ogden is in at the right half, and he's flanked out wide to the right. Namath dropping straight back, looking downfield, fires the ball. It's complete to Tollison, and Tollison is dropped in uh, his own territory on about the 45-yard line. Tim Doerr, the co-captain of Texas, playing one of the linebacking spots, came in to make the stop as the officials now wipe off the ball in the 44-yard line. A gain of seven yards in the play. It's second down and three yards to go for Alabama on their own 44. They trail in the ball game, 21 to 7. We're in the third quarter, 12 minutes, three seconds remaining. Namath hands off to Bowman. Bowman gets across the 45 as he goes outside his right tackle and is brought down in about the 48-yard line. Very close to a first down. Looks like he probably has it. First down for Alabama. And the Crimson Tide now has moved from their own 38-yard line into, uh, rather, up to the 48-yard line, not in the Texas territory yet. They're two yards shy of that. Texas leads the ball game 21-7. Again, it's Ogden wide to the right, Tollison to the left. Name it back to throw. He throws long. He's got a man in the open, Tollison, but he can't hold on to the ball. He was wide open, had a wonderful opportunity. However, he had to turn, and as he turned, he lost his balance. Billy, I believe on that wet grass. I do too, Jim, and I might say that that's the third pass that's been dropped that looked like it was going to be a sure touchdown. And also, I'd like to comment earlier, the one that the gentleman had to stop and wait for the ball, uh, he would have gone all the way. So we must say that Alabama's had the breaks against them tonight. All right, uh, Billy, Texas, 21, Alabama, 7. Driving with the ball, here with it is... Uh... Namath, he passes, complete to Cook. Cook takes it on the 40. A very fine par, fake on the part of Bowman that time, who looked like he had the ball as he drove into the line, but Namath kept it right on his hip, dropped back and fired a completion for a first down to Cook on the 40-yard line. Yeah, this is a 
Smith Namath has the fastest hands that I've ever seen on a quarterback. He, it's unbelievable how fast he gets the ball away once he has picked out his receiver. It's almost simultaneous. Ball is just about 18 yards in from this, the south side. Namath with the ball. He gives to Bowman this time, and Bowman goes from the 40 down to about the 38-yard line. Score is Texas 21, Alabama 7. But Alabama has come charging back here in the second half. They have moved from their own 38-yard line to the 38-yard line of the Texas Longhorns. We have 10 minutes, 31 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Score, Texas 21, Alabama 7. The 31st Orange Bowl Classic. The first time it's been played at night. Joe Namath dropping straight back this time, looking downfield. He has to get rid of that ball. He does, and it is no good. He was being pursued in the backfield by Gold, number 67, who almost decked him but didn't quite get to him as he flipped the ball downfield and it went to the turf. It'll be third down and eight yards to go for Bama. They trail in the ball game by a score of 21 to 7. Alabama trailing in this ball game, the team that went through undefeated, the national champions, trailing Texas, the champions of last year, a team that was rated fourth this year, lost only one ball game, that to Arkansas. Ogden is wide to the right, Namath is back to pass, looks downfield, throws, and it is no good. No good, intended for Kirkin. And the crowd boos as they thought maybe there might have been interference. The crowd booing down here as Perkins went to the turf. However, the official was right there on the play, and he called it an incompleted pass. Tim Doerr is the one who broke up the play. It'll be fourth down, eight yards to go, 10 minutes, seven seconds remaining. Four. The uh, teams here in the third quarter, Alabama taking a long time in the huddle this time. Now they come out. Tolleson is wide to the left, Ogden wide to the right. Name it back to pass on fourth down. Throws, it's complete to Tolleson. He's at the 20 for a first down. Tommy Tolleson took that good throw from Joe Namath, gambling for a first down, and they pick it up down on the 20-yard line. So it's first and 10 with 9 minutes 47 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Alabama moving back into this ball game. They trail 21 to 7, and they're going to try to get back in with the score. Bogdan is in motion with the ball. His name is, he throws. It's complete and a beautiful catch for a touchdown to Perkins. back into this ball game as Joe Namath takes them some 62 yards, throwing to Perkins right in the goal line. He fell into the end zone. Here's the try for point after. It's good. There's a timeout in the field with a score, Texas 21, Alabama 14. This is Russ Ward of NBC News. It began 10 months ago with the New Hampshire primary. NBC News was there and stayed with the political story through the Republican convention in San Francisco, then the Democratic convention in Atlantic City, the tumultuous months of campaigning and the election. And once again, as in every major news event in recent history, more people by far followed the convention and election coverage on NBC than any other network. Now Inauguration Day is almost at hand, January 20th and NBC Radio and Television are ready to bring you the most complete and comprehensive coverage of this memorable day and night. Chet Huntley and David Brinkley will be anchormen on television with Robert McCormick and me on radio, backed by the entire NBC News team. From the Capitol, from the White House, and later at the gala inaugural ball, scores of NBC newsmen will cover the solemn events of this inauguration day. Be with us Wednesday, January 20th for Inauguration Day on NBC Radio and Television. Jim Gibbons along with Billy Vessels, 21 to 14, 9 minutes, 25 seconds remaining as David Ray gets set to kick off with Harris and Green deep for Texas. Alabama charging right back into the ballgame here in the third quarter. A 62-yard drive. Here's the kick. 
A long driving kick deep into the end zone. It'll hit the goal post. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line and be first and 10 for Texas. Well, Billy Vessels, you said that Alabama comes from behind, and certainly uh, they look good on that drive. Just a beautiful drive. Namath picking out his receivers very smartly, uh, and he took them in on probably a duplication of their first touchdown, starting deep in their territory and going right in almost at ease through the air on Texas. All right, first and 10 now for Texas. Their ball on their own 20-yard line. Kristenick in. He hands off to his fullback. Phillips and Phillips drives straight ahead over his own right guard, and he gets up to about the 27 or 28-yard line. We'll see where they mark it down. They put it down on the 28, an 8-yard gain before Paul Crane came in to make the stop. And Texas has second down, two yards to go on their own 28. They lead the ball game, 21 to 14. Wing right this time, the power to the right. In motion is Coy with the ball is Kristenick, following the blocking across the 30 for a first down as he goes out of bounds on the 33-yard line. Marvin Kristenick, the quarterback. He's a little fella, 5'10", 171 pounds, a junior. He doesn't pass as well as some of the others, but uh, he certainly operates that ball well. Ball is brought back in, just uh, 18 yards from the south side. The power now is to the short side of the playing field, wing right with Harris, wing, going with the ball, is the big uh, Ernie Coy, the left half back to tailback, and he drives over his own left guard all the way up to the 40-yard line before Tim Bates brings him down. And Texas now has gone for some 21 yards as they were stung by the 62-yard scoring play of Alabama. Texas leads 21-14, to and they're fighting back. They've got second down, three to go. With the ball is Kristenick as he glides to his left, cuts the corner, gets across the 40, and fights his way up to the 44-yard line before he's brought down. Marvin Kristenick again going to the 44-yard line. Very, this Kristenick reminds me a lot of Daryl Raw when he was quarterbacking, the same type of runner. I believe he might have picked up enough for a first and 10 on that last play, Jim. Well, they're... That's correct, Billy. It's a first and ten. The ball is on the 44-yard line. It's now on the opposite side of the playing field, away from us on the inbound hash mark. The power is to the right, wing to the right, out of the wing tee taught by Darrell Royal. The pitch back goes to Coy. Coy wants to pass, but he can't get it away, and he's thrown for a long loss. Way back on the 37-yard line. Coming in to make the tackle. It was Carroll who came in to make the tackle and dropped him way back on the 37-yard line. So it will be uh, second down and some 17 yards to go for Texas as they lead this ball game 21 to 14. Out of the huddle they come, the T formation. Strong power to the left side this time. In motion is uh, Harris with the ball. As the flag goes down is Derrick, who has come into the ball game at the right side for Texas, and he has dropped. But there are flags on the turf. And now Red Cavett will tell us what the infraction is. 21 to 14 is the score. Texas leading with 7 minutes, 11 seconds remaining. Penalty was uh, against Texas, declined by Alabama. I think Darrell Rawl has taken this opportunity to put his defensive unit back in the ball game, and we might see a third down kick here are a very conservative play. I believe he's going to kick. All right, third down, 17 yards to go. Ray Perkins going deep for Alabama. Back to punter, Ernie Coy. He gets it away, but it's not a particularly good kick. Perkins takes it in a daring catch on the 29, and down he goes in a driving tackle. Tommy Nobis. Tommy Nobis, the linebacker and guard, the All-American candidate from Texas, came barreling in to drop him. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. You are tuned to A10 on your dial, WGY Schenectady, the smoothest sound around. There's timeout on the field with the score, Texas 21, Alabama 14. This is James Daly, your regular Sunday afternoon monitor host. This Sunday, we'll be getting some personal insight into a performer who is as unconventional as he is talented. Anthony Quinn, a former preacher turned actor by accident who has made more than 100 films and who now plans to build a center for philosophers on the island of Rhodes. 
Mr. Quinn has this to say of himself. I certainly am an iconoclast in the sense that I don't like uh, prefabricated uh, philosophy. I don't like predigested values. Uh, I'm a man that's trying to find my own values as I go along. And I must say that uh, uh, as opposing to an anarchistic uh, way of life, it isn't that I want to destroy. It's actually that I would like people to find their own values always with the end result hoping to be for the good. Join us this Sunday and hear the rest of this conversation with Anthony Quinn on NBC's Monitor. All right, back to the ball game, and Joe Namath drops back to pass, and he is thrown back in about the 23-yard line. Joe Namath dropped back in about the 23-yard line as Texas drove in. They had the rush on that time and dropped him back in the 23, a loss from the 30-yard uh, line, a loss of seven yards in the play, so it'll be second down and 17 yards to go. And Alabama's defense, who has played well in this uh, third quarter, stopped uh, Texas a moment ago as Curley came through in a very fine defensive play to force them to kick. And now Joe Namath once again goes back to pass. He throws. It's complete to Perkins on a great catch across the 35, up to about the 36 or 37-yard line. Perkins, uh, who has not gotten up and may be hurt, He's lying on the turf on the 36-yard line, and Alabama will call timeout with an injured player. It'll be third down and three yards to go. Five minutes, 53 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. A hush over the crowd as Perkins, who caught a touchdown pass a few moments ago and made a fine reception. Uh, he's, if this man can catch him in the crowd, Billy, Ray Perkins. He gets up. He's all right. He's going out of the ball game, however, and Tommy Collison is coming in for him. I'd like to comment that with this greatness that Joe Namath is showing here at the Orange Bowl tonight, I think it's rather obvious that he's going to have to have his knee operated on uh, as soon as the season's over, or shortly after the game. The great passer. I just can't get over the way he throws that ball. All right, Billy, five minutes, 53 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. It'll be third down and three to go, and driving with the ball, but not picking up that first down at all is Larry Wall. Larry Wall, whose nickname is Dink, he's six feet tall, 188 pounds a senior, but he ran into a stone wall that time in the part of Texas as he tried to go off the left side of the Texas line, the right side of Alabama. It'll be fourth down and about uh, two yards to go. So now Texas uh, leading 21 to 14. We'll watch as Buddy French has come in to punt, going deep for the Texas Longhorns is Phil Harris. There's the kick. It's a high kick. Calling for the fair catch is Harris, wisely on the 22. Billy, that ball was really up in the air. Perfectly placed. As you know, uh, your defensive-minded coaches like for that ball to be hanging in the air about four and a half seconds. This will enable them to get their uh, defensive players more or less standing there waiting for the man catch the ball. All right, Billy. It's ball is on the 22-yard line. Texas ball. They uh, lead the ball game, 21 to 14. It's Phillips, the fullback, driving with the ball, and he gets up to about the 25-yard line, and down he goes. Coming in to make the stop, the linebacker Bates. Texas have Kristen Eckert, quarterback. They have Phil Harris at the wingback. Ernie Coy is their left half or tailback. Harold Phillips is the fullback. Their ends now are Pete Lamon and George Sauer. Wing right this time. The ball is on the far side of the field. Kristinick with the ball. Comes to this side. He turns the corner across the 25. Fights his way over the 30. Up to the 33-yard line. Fine effort on the part of Marv Kristinick. He was hit in the 30. Carried tacklers with him up to about the 33-yard line. Brought down by Tommy Tallison. Looks like he gained enough for a first and 10 on that play, Jim. And again, I have to say that he reminds me so much of his coach, Darrell Rawl, when Darrell was playing at the University of Oklahoma. That tough little player coming on with a second effort, trying to get every inch that he can. All right, he comes out of the ball game, and Hudson, who is tall, 6'2", 210 pounds, throws the ball well, is in at quarterback. With the ball is Hudson, dropping straight back, has pretty good protection, throws long, looking for Sauer, and he can't get it. No good. Just out of the touch of his fingertips, in defending on the play, was Grady Elmore. 
Grady Elmore all the way back, number 37, defending on the play. As that time, they tried to throw the bomb. Hudson going for Sauer. It worked for a 69-yard scoring play in the second quarter, the same combination. But this time, Alabama had him covered. 21 to 14 is the score. Three minutes, 23 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Texas leads Alabama. Texas owns the football. Second down, 10 to go on their own 33. Driving with the ball is Phillips, but not very far as he goes off his own left tackle, the right side of Alabama's line, taking the handoff from his quarterback, Hudson, going just over the 35-yard line. We'll see where they mark it down. A gain of about two yards in the play. It'll be third down and eight. Jim, I think the reason why he sent in Hudson to throw that particular play, Alabama's fine defensive halfback, Mosley, uh, was injured in the first half and has not returned to the ball game. The only injury that we've had. George Sauer splits out wide to the left. Wing to the right behind the right end is Harris. Back to pass is Hudson. No good. Intended for Ernie Coy, but it's a way over his head. On that particular play, Coy had set back of the line of scrimmage on about the 30-yard line as he went over. He waited and then burst up field, and Hudson tried to hit him on the dead run, but the pass was high. So it'll be fourth down and eight yards to go. Two minutes, 42 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Score is 21 to 14, Texas leading Alabama. A tremendously thrilling ball game. As on fourth down, Perkins goes deep. Along uh, with Hudson Harris, I believe, but we'll check him. As ready to punt is Ernie Coy. There's a pass from center, drops the ball, but picks it up. Fair catch called for, but it's a fake fair catch, and Texas will down the ball as a flag goes down across the way. Throwing up his hand uh, for a fair catch was one of the Alabama receivers. It was Hudson Harris. The ball ever bounced on the ground. Texas downed it on about the 38-yard line. Billy? So I think this will be a five-yard penalty against Texas. No, nope, 15. I thought they did not give the man a fair chance to uh, run with the ball, even though it had hit the ground. He didn't have a chance to come in, and the official now is denoting that the uh, receiver had been pushed. 15-yard penalty against Texas, and the ball is now on Texas' 48-yard line. Right, Billy. Interference called against uh, interference against Texas on uh, the receiver. He has to have an opportunity of uh, doing with that ball what he would like. He didn't have that opportunity, and a penalty called against Texas. Moving the ball back to the 48-yard line. But it'll be Texas' ball, or rather um, Alabama's ball. Check that, in Texas territory. So the Crimson Tide now has a good field position on this ball. They own it in Texas territory on the 48-yard line of Texas. Texas leads 21 to 14. Alabama trainer going off of the field. Alabama will have Joe Namath at quarterback. Ogden will be at the right half. Kelly has been playing the fullback spot, but we'll check that and check to see whether Perkins, who has made some fine catches out there tonight, is back in the ball game or whether Tollison. It's Perkins who's in. Ogden is wide to the right. Joe Namath dropping straight back, throws a quick pass, and it's complete in the 40. The ball carrier is down on the 40-yard line. It was Wayne Cook, and Joe Namath just took that ball, stepped back one step, and flipped it right over the line, and the quick look-in pass to Wayne Cook, and Cook was down over the 40 on the 39-yard line. A gain of some eight yards on the play. It'll be second down and two yards to go, and now Texas has their work cut out for them. The Longhorns lead the ball game, 21 to 14. Hopper has come in for Cook. Ogden is wide to the right. Namath with the ball. He hands off to Harris, and Harris drives over his own left guard down to about the 36-yard line. Hudson Harris over his own left guard, and the quick driving play got down to the 36-yard line for a first down. Jim, I might say that Darrell Wall is still staying in his 6-2 defense. Uh, but now he's only rushing one linebacker, whereas he had planned to rush both of them to put the big uh, pressure on Joe Namath. All right, Billy, Namath dropping straight back, looking downfield, throws long, looking for Perkins, and it's broken up beautifully by Dixon. What a great save by Dixon, as it looked like a touchdown, sure, for a moment. Perkins had gotten a step behind him. Dixon went up in the air at the last instant, almost intercepted the ball, but got it away from the outstretched hands of Ray Perkins. 
Grosso, Daryl Royal, and the Texas Longhorns must have had heart failure there for a moment. As Ray Perkins went straight down, and Joe Namath almost hit him. Second down, 10 to go. A minute, 16 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. 21 to 14 to score. Texas leads, but Alabama threatens him. Namath is pressured out of the pocket, throws downfield on a comeback reception. It's complete inside the 30, fights his way down to the 25-yard line. Ray Ogden, who was downfield, came back to make that catch. Fine effort, Billy, on the part of Ogden and Namath. Wonderful catch, and he was almost away for a touchdown there. He, he almost broke away from him, but I, I just can't get over how fast. I thought he was going to be thrown for a loss, Jim. They had four men rushing him, and while he was backing up, he hit Ogden with that beautifully thrown pass. All right, out of the huddle comes Alabama. Ogden is wide to the right, Perkins to the left. Namath is back to throw. He throws. It's complete. This time to Trimble, and Trimble is inside the 20, inside the 15, out of bounds on the 12-yard line. Wayne Trimble taking the quick throw from Joe Namath and goes out of bounds on the 12-yard line. 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter, and Alabama has caught on fire. They trailed at halftime by a score of 21 to 7. They moved 62 yards for a touchdown, and now they're deep in Texas territory, down in the 12-yard line. Perkins is wide to the right. 21 to 14 is the score. 29 seconds. Billy Vessel is remaining here in this third quarter. Jim, this this comeback in the second half is a what Bear Bryant really talks about when he says pride. This is a team of pride. He thought he possibly had better personnel on his 1962 football team, but this club, as I said early in the program, had to come from behind in three of its last four games. And we're seeing a beautiful example of this play tonight. Joe Namath picking his receivers uh, very adroitly, and uh, Texas uh, just literally now hanging on. Alabama has dominated this second half play uh, keeping the ball in Texas territory. Texas almost had one drive started, uh, but was fizzled, and now Alabama has come back and threatening to score again. 21 to 14. We might uh, just mention some of the Alabama coaches here, and I want to mention the Texas coaches too. While we have an opportunity, it's Alabama's Johnny Lashley, who's the line coach, Tim Donahue, the defensive line coach, Clem Griska, Dude Hennessy, Ken Meyer, D. Powell, Howard Schnellenberger for Alabama, and we'll check those Texas coaches for you at our first opportunity. The fine assistance to Daryl Royal. The ball is on the 12-yard line of Texas. Alabama owns that football. They trail in the ball game, 21 to 14. Excitement ramp here at the Orange Bowl, the 31st Orange Bowl Classic. And this crowd of 72,000 that came to witness what they thought would be a tremendous football game are seeing exactly that. Out of the huddle comes Alabama, and splitting out wide to the right is Tollison. In motion is Ogden. Namath with the ball, dropping back, running to his right, looking downfield, throwing, and it is no good. It's intercepted, I believe. No, it's broken up. It looked for a moment like it was intercepted by Texas. The ball was deflected out of the hands of the intended receiver, who was Tollison, and the Texas man went down on that ball, but he couldn't hold it. So it goes as an incompleted pass. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go for Alabama. Their football on the 12-yard line of Texas. Texas leads 21 to 14 as we have 23 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Alabama trailing 21 to 7 at the half is striking back. Ogden is flanked out extremely wide to the right. Going with the ball, driving down to the 10-yard line is Leslie Kelly, the fullback. Brought down that time by Talbert and Nobis. The ball is on the inbound hash mark from the uh, south side of the field. So the wide play inside of the field is to the right as it looks like this will be the last play in the third quarter. Two seconds remaining. One second. That's the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter with the score, Texas 21, Alabama 14. This is Frank Blair. Be sure to hear radio's most informative and interesting new feature series, Emphasis. I appear daily on Emphasis with my new program, Emphasis Let's Be Frank, in which I speak frankly about a variety of things that make up the bits and pieces of everyday life. Also on emphasis, there is NBC's celebrated newsman, Frank McGee, who presents inside stories behind the news. Emphasis is Chet Huntley, 
who reaches into his years of experience as a newsman as he reports on Emphasis Plain Talk. There's Arlene Francis on Emphasis, telling you how to enjoy a more beautiful life. And following Arlene Francis on Emphasis is star NBC newswoman Nancy Dickerson, who brings you all the news from Washington. Emphasis is also sports with Lindsay Nelson, with his colorful commentary and interviews with top athletes from the exciting world of sports. Hear the biggest names in broadcasting eight times daily, Monday through Friday on Emphasis, on this NBC station. Jim Gibbons, along with Billy Vessels, here at the end of the third quarter, Texas 21, Alabama 14. Well, he's got his trying to protect Joe Namath as much as he can. Uh, he's got Fimmel in there protecting him, and he's a good size, one, six foot of 196. He's also put in Dink Wall, who he likes, so possibly he's going to try to throw this over. I, he's getting pretty tight down there, Jim. Right, Billy, we were wondering why Bowman, who is his top runner and picked up 536 yards during the season, was not in, but Billy was pointing out that Wayne Trimble is probably a little better as a pass blocker and perhaps a better receiver in the ball game now. And Larry Dinkwall has just come in at fullback, number 36, replacing Leslie Kelly. So the ball, which is just on the 10-yard line, on the inbound hash mark on the far side of the field, with third down, eight yards to go for Alabama. They trail Texas 21 to 14 as we prepare now to go into the fourth quarter. A tremendous football game between two great football teams, Texas and Alabama. Band across the way and down below us. Alabama's across the way and Texas down below us. But now it's back to the ball game. As Ogden is wide to this side, name it back to pass. Throws down the middle and it's no good. Over the head of the intended receiver, Tolleson. He went high in the air, but it was NG, no good. And now David Ray comes into the ballgame, and Paul Bryan doesn't want to go out of Texas territory empty-handed. He wants to get three points if he can. 21 to 14 is the score. Texas leading. Elmore will be in the hold. David Ray, who has kicked 12 field goals during the season, is ready to boot it. There it goes, and it is good. Splits the uprights for three points. And the ball game has tightened up. It's Texas 21, Alabama 17. So now Alabama will kick off, and Texas will receive. And Hicks Green, number 47, is one of those deep for the Texas Longhorns. And Phil Harris is the other. Real tribute to this Alabama team, the way they've recovered here in the second half and uh, just more or less carried the ball game to Texas. Now with the score 21 to 17 and in a position of maybe going to add on a touchdown. Let's see if Texas can come back and score. All right, here's the kickoff. Ray kicking off. Looked like went off the side of his foot. Coming up to take it, one of the up men on the 15-yard line. He's at the 20, the 25, to the 30. Fights his way up to about the 34-yard line before he's brought down. So Texas will own that football on the 34-yard line. It looked like it was... Uh, Simmons who came in to make the uh, tackle. And it was Stockton. Stockton, who carried the ball, took it on the 15 and got it back to the 34. So it's first and 10 now for Texas on their own 34. George Sauer comes wide to the left. Hudson is in at quarterback for the Texas Longhorns. They lead the ball game 21 to 17. With the ball is Ernie Coy. Ernie glides to his right, cuts the corner, gets across the 35, and gets up to about the 37-yard line before he's brought down. A gain of about uh, three yards on the play. It'll be second down and approximately seven yards to go. The ball is brought in to the inbound hash mark on the far side of the field. <laughs> 13 minutes, 54 seconds remaining here in the ball game. 21 to 17 is the score. Texas leading Alabama. An exciting ball game between two top teams. George Sauer comes wide to the left. The strong power, however, is to the right out of the wing tee. Harris is behind Lamons, calling the signals is Hudson. Hudson is back to throw. Throws long, looking for Sauer once again, and it is no good. Depending on the play, Hudson Harris. The crowd gets to its feet on that long scoring attempt from Hudson to Sauer. 
Billy? This is the one real big surprise to me tonight from talking with Daryl Royal about his pregame plans. I think he's all of a sudden gone to trying to get the big quick score. That uh, was uh, probably about a 50-yard pass from uh, Harris to Sauer, and Sauer, of course, they love on these deep passes. Well, Billy, he scored uh, twice, uh, one on an 80 or 79-yard run by Coy and another a 16-yard, 9-yard passing play, so he probably liked that and would like to do it again. Sauer is wide to the left. With the ball is... There is with the ball, and it's no good. A pass, fumble perhaps, and let's see whether it's going to go as an incompleted pass. The pass was intended for Ernie Coy, and... He dropped it back of the line of scrimmage. We weren't sure whether it was going to be called an incompleted pass or a fumble lateral, but it was simply called an incompleted pass. There was a flag on the play. I believe Pete Lemons got a little quick there to, to start the play, and he jumped off sides. Alabama re declined the penalty, and uh, Texas will now be forced to kick. All right, Billy. Going back to punt is Ernie Coy. Deep. Harris on this side. Tollison on the far side. There's the pass from center. There's the kick. He just gets it away, but what a beautiful kick. Over the head of the intended receiver into the end zone. Gorgeous kick on the part of Ernie Coy. He really got that ball up in the air. He almost had it blocked. Two men were right in on him. The last three times that Ernie's kicked, and they have almost been blocked, but I might point out that uh, one thing that they kept in Alabama in trouble with in the first half was the 47-yard uh, punting average of Ernie Coy besides his beautiful running. Uh, the longest one in that first quarter was 69 yards, and this one, I think, would be much longer. 21 to 17 is the score. 13 minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the ball game. Alabama has the ball in their own 20-yard line. They trail in the ball game. Nemeth back to pass. Throws. It's complete. The ball carries at the 30. Out of bounds on about the 34-yard line. It was Wayne Tremel who took the little pass out in the flat on the 25 to the left side, the far side of the playing field. Scooted across the 30 and was belted out of bounds on the 33, they say, by Joe Dixon. And down below us. Alabama's band calls go, go, as out of the huddle comes Alabama with Perkins coming to this side, Ogden to the far side, score is 21 to 17, as with the ball is Namath, he throws, no good, intended that time for Tremble, and it was the same type of play only to this side of the field, they ran into the far side of the field before, with Tremble delaying just a moment, then getting right behind the line, and Namath attempting to flick that little pass in the flat to him. But this time, it was no good. So it'll be second down, 10 yards to go. 21 to 17 is the score. Texas leads Alabama. 13 minutes remaining in the ball game. Alabama trailing 21 to 7 at the half, has come back to tighten up this ball game and have a good chance to win it. Texas doesn't want them to, and they're digging in. Here's a pass from Namath, and it is no good. Intended for Ogden. Coming in to break up the play was King, along with Malden, Dan Malden and King, blocking the play, and so it'll be third down and 10 yards to go. Jim, I'd like to comment about uh, Malden. His father was an All-American at the University of, of Texas. Uh, Ernie Coy's father was an All-American at the University of Texas, and, of course, George Sire, who has been playing a good uh, offensive ball. His father was also an All-American at the University of Nebraska. Joe Namath back to pass, standing back on the 24, has to get out of there, elects to run with the ball, he's at the 35, 40, and down he goes on the 41. And Joe Namath was trapped back there, got away from the tacklers, and ran upfield inside the 40 to about the 41-yard line. A good effort on the part of Namath. 12 minutes, 39 seconds remaining. It'll be fourth down, and let's see how far they are away from a first down, about two or three yards. 21 to 17 is the score. Texas leads Alabama. Coming into punt is French. Going back, number 25, Harris. For Texas. There's the pass from center. There's the kick. High kick. Waiting for it is Harris. Calling for the fair catch. Takes it on the 25. And it'll be Texas's ball on their own 25-yard line. Just about 20 yards in from this to the south side of the playing field. The 31st Orange Bowl Classic. Time out of the field with the score, Texas 21, Alabama 17. The football, out of the huddle they come. Ogden is wide to the right. The ball is on the inbound hash mark on the south side. Namath back to pass. Looking downfield, he throws long. 
And it's no good. Intended for Tolleson on a crossover pattern. Tolleson was right, and now Namath was belted. He's very slow getting up. Gets to his feet, as he was hit pretty hard that time. But in the act of throwing the football, it looked like it was Olin Underwood who came in to hit him. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. The ball is on the 41-yard line of Texas. Alabama has the football. The clock has stopped. Ogden goes out of the football game. Ray comes in. So in the backfield for Alabama, Joe Namath at quarterback. Wayne Tremble is at left half. Larry Wall is at full. David Ray is now in at the flanking back spot. And Namath is going over to the sideline to talk with the trainer. We have not seen Sloan come in as yet. Apparently, uh, I believe Namath will stay in, Jim. Uh, it's not his knee. I think he got a cut under his eye. Uh, using the field glasses here, he, uh, his head hit the ground rather hard. He got tackled real hard just as he threw the ball. Uh, he did not hurt the knee that's been giving him trouble, and many thought that possibly he would not play in this game because he re-injured his knee four days ago. Uh, it is not the knee injury. I think he's just getting his eye uh, worked on there a little bit. He'll be back in the ball game. A minute 38 seconds remaining here in the Orange Bowl. A tremendous game between Alabama and Texas. 21 to 17, Texas leading, but Alabama has that football in the 41-yard line of Texas. And I can tell you that the 72,000 fans who came out here tonight to watch this, the first night bowl game, really have enjoyed it. It's been a great game. It's been very colorful here under the lights and weather that has been kind. We've had a little sprinkling of rain, but the temperature certainly has been balmy. Texas uh, got off to a lead early in the ball game. They had some fine playing on the part of Ernie Coy and uh, Hudson and fine catching on the part of Sauer. They did a tremendous job. It certainly were overwhelming in the first half. Alabama came back in the second half. They have done a tremendous job, too. Joe Namath has led them. He's done a good job of passing for them here tonight. He's thrown for uh, one touchdown pass, and he directed his team to another. A uh, penalty against Alabama, moving the ball back to the 46-yard line, and I presume that's for too much time. Delay of the ball game, a minute 38 seconds remaining. Darrell Royal went out, the fine young coach of Texas, across the way, Paul Bear Bryant. So here we go, and hang on to your chairs. Out of the huddle comes Alabama. Namath back with the ball, standing back in the 45. He throws downfield, and it's no good. Intended for Tremble. And it'll be third down and 15 yards to go. Third and 15. The ball originally was on the 41-yard line. And a five-yard penalty moved it back to the 46. A minute 33 seconds remaining here in the ball game. Texas leads 21 to 17. A good portion of the crowd here at the Orange Bowl standing. Out of the huddle comes Alabama. They have got to pick up a first down if they want to keep possession of this ball and have a chance to score. The rush is on. There's the pass, and it's no good. Intended for Ray. The pass was low and into the turf. Texas men were right with him. Now it'll be fourth down and 15 yards to go. For Alabama. Scoreboard's wrong. It shows fourth and 10. Now they're changing it, Billy, to show fourth and 15. Jim, I've been noticing... Namath and Bear Bryant over on the sideline. He's trying to pick on uh, Ray Perkins. He's trying to find Perkins in the open. He might come back to him on this play. Okay, with a minute 28 remaining, this is a big play for both teams. Namath back to pass. He throws downfield, and it's no good. Almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by Tim Doerr, the linebacker. Uh, there's a flag on the play. There is a flag on the play right down below us on the 48-yard line. And the Texas Longhorns and Daryl Royal are indeed very happy at this particular moment. With a minute 22 seconds remaining, Marv Kristinek going in at quarterback for them. They will simply attempt to run out this clock. I think we're going to start hearing chants that we're number one now from the Texas fans. All right, out of the huddle they come. Calling the signals is Kristinek. A minute 22 seconds. The ball is to Coy. Coy is running wide to the right. He gets back to the line of scrimmage as he turns the corner on the far side of the field. But a minute 13 seconds remain. A minute 11 seconds. Texas leads 21 to 17. It'll be second down, 10 yards to go. Texas ball to the 46. The scoreboard clock shows a minute three. We certainly want to offer our congratulations to both of these teams and the fine brand of football they displayed here tonight. They came into this bowl game 
with reputations that would indicate it would be a great ball game, and indeed that it has. 45 seconds remaining, and Texas may be penalized now for delay of the game. But they don't particularly care. It does stop the clock. The ball is on the 41-yard line, a five-yard penalty, delay of the ball game, inflicted against Texas. 44 seconds remaining, 21 to 17. Texas leads the ball game. Some of the crowd now, Billy, beginning to uh, get to the exits, uh, taking their time. They want to see if anything might happen in this explosive game before it ends that, that hasn't already happened. There's the pitch back to Coy. Coy uh, comes to this side, turns up field, gets up to about the 42. 36 seconds remains. It'll be third down. For the Texas Longhorns, the ball is just 20 yards in from this, the south side of the playing field. 27 seconds remains. Clock continues to tick away the seconds. Obviously, Alabama does not have any timeouts left. Otherwise, they would use them to stop that clock. 18 seconds remain. 17, 16, The most 14. hopeless feeling in the world for a defensive club right now, Jim. 21 to 17. Seven seconds on third down. Listen to the crowd. And now the whistle blows, stopping the clock, and Texas will be penalized another five yards. The great victory, uh, apparent victory, I should caution myself. Anything can happen in this game, Jim. Uh, for Darrell Rawl and his Texas Longhorns, who's had a, a tremendous season this year, uh, a team that's never given up, uh, defeated once by Arkansas 14-13, to and that's when they went for the two-point try. Now back to the game. Five seconds remaining on third down, and Mario Kristinek just drives into the center of that line. Two seconds, one second, the game is over. Texas wins it, 21 to 17. That's the end of the game with the final score, Texas 21, Alabama 17. Now we'll be back in a moment with the final wrap-up of tonight's game. This is Russ Ward of NBC News. It began 10 months ago with the New Hampshire primary. NBC News was there and stayed with the political story through the Republican convention in San Francisco, then the Democratic convention in Atlantic City, the tumultuous months of campaigning and the election. And once again, as in every major news event in recent history, more people by far followed the convention and election coverage on NBC than any other network. Now Inauguration Day is almost at hand, January 20th and NBC Radio and Television are ready to bring you the most complete and comprehensive coverage of this memorable day and night. Chet Huntley and David Brinkley will be anchormen on television with Robert McCormick and me on radio, backed by the entire NBC News team. From the Capitol, from the White House, and later at the gala inaugural ball, scores of NBC newsmen will cover the solemn events of this inauguration day. Be with us Wednesday, January 20th for Inauguration Day on NBC Radio and Television. Jim Gibbons along with Billy Vessels after a tremendous, exciting contest between Texas and Alabama, with Texas winning by a score of 21 to 17. Just to review briefly here, Billy, the scoring plays, Texas got off first. The star of their ball game has to be Ernie Coy on an 80-yard run or a 79-yard run. It was really 79 and a half, but we'll make it 79 because that's what it's officially going into the record books as, a new record run from scrimmage and a great run by Coy who uh, gave Texas that explosive play that they wanted, put them out in front by a score of 7 to nothing. Very shortly thereafter, Texas again run the scoreboard on a brilliant pass from Hudson, a fine catch in the part of George Sauer, and they were leading by a score of 14 to nothing. Then Alabama got back in the ball game on an 87-yard scoring drive with Joe Namath, who came off of the bench to lead them downfield. And it was Namath who threw a seven-yard touchdown pass culminating the 87-yard drive to put the tide back in the ballgame at that point by a score of 14-7. to Then as Alabama had blocked a field goal attempt by Texas, it was fourth down, and all Alabama had to do, really, was to let the ball be recovered by Texas or recover it themselves, but they tried to pick it up and run with it, and once they did that, they were hit and they fumbled the ball. It then became a free ball, and Texas recovered, and Texas took advantage of that opportunity. They went in to score, and at halftime they led by a score of 21-7. to 7. Alabama 
in their tradition came out in the second half and came charging back and drove 62 yards with Namus passing to Perkins for a score, putting them back in the ball game by a score of 21 to 14. Namath and Alabama then moved downfield, right down to the goal line of Texas, but on fourth down, Joe Namath, on a quarterback sneak from a yard out, could not get it in to that goal line. A great goal line stand by Texas, and the score remained 21 to 17. So while we had uh, all kinds of excitement, uh, it was Texas who came out with the victory, 21-17, Billy Vessels, a great ball game. Jim, again, let me say it's the greatest football game I've ever watched. A uh, most exciting game. Joe Namath, although in defeat, uh, had to put on one of the greatest performances ever, ever witnessed here in the 31-year history of the Orange Bowl. Namath, who is going to be sending a contract with the New York Jets very shortly, uh, had to set uh, all kinds of new records for passing. Uh, here at the Orange Bowl. A beautiful game, a very hard-fought game, uh, coming in with supposedly conservative coaches. Uh, it was a wide-open ball game, a game uh, with many thrills, many heartbreaks. Uh, coming out of the end zone on the punting situation, Jim, I thought was most crucial. Uh, Texas did it. They won the ball game. Right. Thank you very much, Billy Vessels. And that just about wraps it up. This is Jim Gibbons, along with Billy Vessels. I certainly want to thank Vincent Burns of Alabama, who... Uh, assisted us with the Alabama Crimson Tide and Dwayne Whitehead, uh, one of the players from Texas who helped us with the Texas team. Again, a congratulations to Darrell Royal and certainly our best wishes to Paul Bear Bryant, both of them on a very fine football game. Our producer this evening, Len Dillon. Our engineer, Dan Hozak. Once again, the final score, Texas 21, Alabama 17. This has been an NBC Radio Sports presentation. Hi, this is Barry Nelson, your regular Saturday afternoon monitor host. In store for you this Saturday, a talk with Henry Morgan, a man of many talents who has just written a book for children, and anyone else who will buy it. Says Henry, Well, you must realize that the emperor is very wealthy, and an ordinary emperor couldn't possibly have all these things. But as best I remember, and not having seen the book for over 10, 15 minutes, <laughs> among his uh, possessions are two roast beef trees, both very rare. He has a number of fireflies in different colors. Uh, puce, magenta, persimmon, olive drab, and the usual color. He has a horse that can count to 17. <laughs> and he has a set of china made in Japan. And he um, owns a jungle. More from Henry Morgan, author, raconteur, satirist, and humorist this Saturday afternoon on NBC Monitor. This is the NBC Radio Network. Hey, turn on your dial, WGY Schenectady.